All right, hello everyone. This is Counter Yolo again, bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing our continuation of our series of ranking the starships and continuing with cruisers. And so yeah, today I'll start with my biases and limitations. There's a little bit more than in the, in the last videos in terms of that section. And then we'll get into the actual rankings of all of the t full statted tier six starships themselves, going from best to worst. It will take me a lot longer to get the TLDR on Reddit versus the other videos, there's just a lot for me to put in that post versus the other ones. So that one's gonna take a while. Maybe it'll show up next week, we'll see. Anyway, feel free to see the time links in the description or at the time bar at the bottom of the screen. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. So in terms of general biases, um, this is just like with the other videos, I'm my general biases is that I prefer PVE. And also because I just don't have a lot of experience in modern SSEO with PvP and things are changing so rapidly. I mean, like the most recent Sea Store bundle definitely affected PvP. And so trying to make a tier list at all for PvP is just not going to be super realistic. Um, so I'm just not considering PvP. In terms of PvE styles, uh, my general preferences are over here on, on the right. For full specializations, command is generally speaking the best. It's the best for tanking and it's, it's the best for torpedo stuff. Um, so there's just a ton of things available to it. From a flexibility standpoint, Temporal is um, fairly strong, just like Miracle Worker. In terms of full specializations, I, I consider them those two about, about, about equal for, for basically most builds inside of the game. But for partial specializations, I do consider Temporal a little bit stronger than Miracle Worker. Beyond them, um, for full specializations, I prefer full pilot over, over for full intel. I don't feel that Intel really gives you much beyond Lieutenant Commander rank, but Pilot doesn't really give you too much in PvE besides Pilot Maneuvers. So because of that, for partial specializations, Intel ranks higher than Pilot for me. And then it's Merit Worker, Temporal, and, and Command. Also keep in mind though, even though this these are my biases for this, um, when it comes to cruisers, we have so few cruisers with, with Pilot abilities at all that pilot really isn't going to make that much of, a, of an impact in the overall rankings. A lot of cruisers have, have command seating in some fashion, which also means we can, we can be a lot pickier into which cruisers are actually good and which cruisers actually suck. Um, also keep in mind, I am a tank captain. So generally speaking, starships that are a little bit better at tanking will be higher in the list than others. That being said, when it comes to cruisers, pretty much all of them can tank. And that's just kind of the way it is. So um, I, I, I'm, I think if, I, if I've done the tier list right, it's going to be less based on tanking and more based upon other elements. But it is still going to be on the fact that I value flexibility over, over being a one-trick pony in one particular play style. So versus what other people like to have for their list on Reddit, mine will be different because of that. Uh, of course, for additional considerations, I mean, Unlike what other people will say for different buying things, I will not be considering starship traits nor consoles that come from starships. Yes, there are people that will seek out starships for, for specific traits or for specific consoles. That will not really be much of a consideration for this video. Um, we're assuming that if it's rated higher in this video, it's because you're actually going to be flying that particular ship. And again, um, I will only be considering pets and consoles if those pets are stuck and restricted to that specific ship or a specific class of starships, and if, if the pets themselves are notably strong. Um, same thing with consoles. Um, if the console is restricted to a specific starship or a specific small group of starships, it will only be noted in this video if that console itself is really, really strong. Basically, we're talking about in, in the rough realm of strength of like the DPR which isn't necessarily the strongest console anymore. There are some consoles that, are, that do even more damage than DPRM now. So um, that's kind of around the word roughly talking about here. Not necessarily the strongest, but ones that are still good. In terms of place, play, play style elements themselves, um, energy damage, entropy damage are, are gonna be very high um, on the list here. Um, when, it, when it comes to tanking, um, Flight deck carriers do have a very large edge in tanking versus the other playstyles, and we will cover that when we get to our first flight deck carrier in in the tier list, um, in in particular. When when it comes to energy and, and torpedo damage, um, I have decided for ease of the tier list that if a starship does not have at least five tactical abilities, 
or if the starship does not have a lieutenant commander tactical seat or higher available to the ship between the force tactical abilities and the and the um, u, u, universal seats to be made into tactical abilities i am putting that sh putting all those ships into e tier or lower um which does mean because of that there's going to be a lot of ships that are going to end up in d and a lot of ships that are going to end up in e so in terms of like my overall like bell curve thing it's going to be a little bit flatter <laughs> than than it has been in past videos and there's going to be a lot more on the back end of of the um, tier list Superior DPS is kind of the same thing. Ideally, we want to concentrate rate firepower three plus the lieutenant commander tactical. There are some ships above C tier that violate that, but they do need concentrate firepower three still. As for other things on on the list, if a ship has raider flanking, it's it's going to be really high because there's only three cruisers with raider flanking. Cool. Okie dokie. In terms of subclass biases themselves. Um, when it comes to cruisers, and I will talk about this, this as well in, in a bit, their mastery packages are pretty suboptimal, um, generally speaking, especially for modern Star Trek Online versus how things have changed over time. As thus, we're I ideally looking for cruisers that have some sort of mechanical advantage versus what escorts and science vessels can, can give us. And the only clear winner here are flight deck carriers. They're, they're, they're the only one that gets eight weapons and gets to have two hangar bays. Um, they are very, very fantastic. They work really well. Even though their master package is suboptimal, they get to have two hangar bays, which allows them to do have lots of, of, of DPS support through their hangar pets, whether that's through actual damage or through like suppression barrage frigates that are available to those that build to all um, starships with two hangar bays. So they are very flexible in terms of being able to do many different play styles. Below them are, are several different types of, 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 of well, basically most of the other cruisers. Um, frigates in theory should be uh, on the same tier as like flight day carriers. The issue with frigates, frankly, is even though they do have some mechanical advantages with, with Raider flanking, um, when you start to look at the base stats, you basically realize that frigates are essentially just a more flexible, but less, um, has, has less DPS, DPS potential than what you actually see from warships and destroyers, which are, Right, right, right here at the top of escorts. So yes, um, frigates can out DPS a lot of uh, of the S escort subclasses because of raider flanking, but it's not going to be the big, be the best. Warships and destroyers and juggers are still going to out DPS them, even when frigates get really, really good in their specialization seating e eventually in the future. As really flight deck carriers, they really stick out. Beyond them, you've got most of the other subclasses here with multi mission cruisers, dreadnought cruisers, and battle cruisers really rounding it out. And then below them, in, in a distinct tier below them, are our cruisers. And then below them, we have our engineering warbirds, which really, really suck. And I've got a special slide just explaining why engineering warbirds are terrible in Star Trek Online. But um, before we actually get into that, um, I do need to mention a lot of things that have changed for how I have defined um, cruisers um, versus even, even just last time on, on the channel. First off, we got a new subclass called Multi-Mission Cruisers. And that's because if you even go back in history, my very first Starship Classes Explained video, we had a class called Flight Deck Cruisers. Well, Cryptic in that time added the, the Discovery Merc Worker Flight Deck Cruisers, which were renamed to Flight Deck Carriers because they had two hangar bays and they just buffed all of, of, of the Flight Deck Cruisers and made them have two hangar bays. And so they were, were renamed Flight Deck Carriers and took over what the, what the engineering carrier subclass really was in, in, in my personal starship classes explained stuff. As a result, they really took over that carrier part of the six different categories of starships. And so there was actually a, a big gap here in terms of what to actually fill it. And so what and so whenever they, they added this subclass, I, I did restructure how I define carriers. And I tried my best to put everything where it thematically fit the best. So for instance, the Enterprise J and its two variants um, went in, into flight deck carriers as a subclass because it's got eight weapons and two hangar bays. That makes sense. And, it's, and they have cruiser commands besides the Warbird variant. However, for instance, the Herc Dreadnought Carrier has seven weapons, um, has a Starship Master Package very, very akin to what you see from, from your tactical Dreadnought Carriers. And 
when I compared the, the base stats and maneuverability, it matched up very, very well to what I saw from a lot of the tactical dreadnought carriers. And so I moved that one over to the escort tier list. And, I, and that the same thing happened with, with the Vorgon carrier. When I, when I compared it to the other stuff for science carriers, a six weapon starship um, with two hangar bays, a lot of the rest of the stuff really matched up well in terms of its base stats and everything to what I saw from a lot of the other science carriers. The only difference was just that the Vorgon carrier has commander engineering and the Herc carrier has commander engineering versus commander tactical for the escort tier list and commander science for the science tier list. Other than that, they matched up really well. And so versus the actual totals, what, what you see from the old to the new, we did technically get two more starships than what the totals would imply. And that's because these two particular starships were moved out of the, my engineering list and over to the science and, and escort list instead. Additionally, for various changes, um, I, I did move most of the engineering warbirds into the battle cruiser subclass. Um, and I'll talk about this in a while as well, but um, what I was starting to realize was what warbirds typically give you is access to dual cannons. And one of the primary differences between cruisers and battle cruisers, at least initially, was that battle cruisers got dual cannons. Is that those are that's really basically the main difference between those two classes alongside, you know, having having less cruiser commands. And so if we were comparing the two and if cruiser commands were not a factor, that would be the main difference. And all warbirds get access to dual cannons, and so that just makes sense there. And there are only two engineering warbirds in the game that have a hangar bay. And so when you look at the other three alternatives that have don't have hangar bays of cruisers, battle cruisers, and frigates, the Warbirds that, that I consider as part of the frigate family are, are ones that have enhanced battle cloaks, and we don't have, have any engineering warbirds with enhanced battle cloaks. So that takes out four, and cruisers don't have dual cannons. So for me, I was I moved most of the engineering warbirds into that battle cruiser sub, sub, subclass. A little bit long winded, but I felt I needed to say that. Additionally, um, what I also did was I moved the Caesar Mega Bundle Command battle cruisers over into the multi mission cruiser subclass. What I was realizing, as I started to compare, especially in the stats, in terms of differences between battle cruisers and multi multi mission cruisers, what I realized was the main difference between them was that there actually wasn't much of a difference. Like in terms of actual raw based stats, they they pretty much mirror e each other. The difference really is whether you have crit severity or whether you have a a, a hangar bay, and so. Like just like the fleet Gromba Seas destroyer, um, that I reclassified into a strike wing escort because it happened to fall into both categories. Um, and it, that was the same thing that I did for the command um, battle cruisers from from the sea store. They are basically just battle cruisers that have a hangar bay, and multi mission cruisers are pretty much battle cruisers that instead of crit severity have a hangar bay. So for me, um, whenever a sergeant falls into two categories, I'm going to be using the category in which thematically makes the most sense to players and generally speaking players pay more attention to hangar bays than starship mastery packages so for me thematically it made the most sense to put these command battle cruisers there from the sea store into that multi-mission cruiser category as thus even though we only technically got two multi-mission cruisers since the last video um i am adding this uh, command battle cruiser meg bundle of nine ships into that category and so we have 11 ships here even so, when you're looking at the base stats of these ships versus the, versus our two multi-mission cruisers, their base stats pretty much match up. <laughs> so um, I I really didn't have an issue moving move them in there. In terms, in terms of our new ships, um, we got a couple of new cruisers, a couple of new battle cruisers, including you know an engineering warbird and a new frigate. Those two multi mission cruisers and then the then, then the Galaxy X. Cool. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right. Um, as for our cruisers, as thus, our total actually happens to be 117, which is slightly odd. Um, when I was doing this list, I did not realize that there was going to be 117 escorts and 117 um, cruisers. Now, granted, um, since I started doing these um, videos, there was... Um, you know, a science vessel and an, an escort added um, to the fleet. So technically the total will be a little bit different. 
because I've I've been doing stats of the totals of all the, all the ships combined. Um, I am not I'm I'm putting in the stats for the Fleet Nova or the or the Fleet Saber. Um, I'm in into these lists themselves. Cool. Okay, okay. That said, there's there's a list for the cruisers, battle cruisers, dreadnought cruisers, frigates, multiple mission cruisers, and the flight deck carriers in, inside the game. Um, as for the cruiser class as as a whole, there is a lot of issues. Now, cruisers as a whole always have eight weapons, and that's nice. Um, their mastery package flat out sucks. So two of their two of their mastery points is in damage resistance, which if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that regular damage resistance does not scale well. So especially in a game where you know enemy HP and your HP have been going up exponentially, and there's several um, traits in the game that can give you hundreds upon hundreds of damage resistance resistance, getting more resistance in your mastery package for a starship generally is not worth it. Um, now, two of them are fine if you're going to be a tank, and that's the HP regen for three seconds and the 10% whole HP. And so what cruisers have instead to try to make up for this is cruiser commands, in which you, we have four variants. We have weapon system efficiency for power cost reduction, which is the primarily best one to use if you're going to be a an energy-based um, captain. You, we have strategic maneuvering, which gives us an extra flat turn rate, which is and and is a percentage to flight speed. So let's say, for instance, for strategic maneuvering of a plus three turn rate, let's say hypothetically you have a starship that has a turn rate of five. Well, you could activate strategic maneuvering, and now the ship actually has a turn rate of eight instead of five, because that that plus three turn is adding to your base turn rate. It is it is actually very very strong. Um, and as this, this is the optimal one for um, for, for torpedo boats, um, just because the rest of them really just don't matter too much. Um, shield re remodulation gives you extra re um, shield regeneration and shield resistance. Um, this one's this one's okay for tanking. Um, it really just depends upon how coordinated your team actually is. Um, if if your team is willing to stay within the within your aura as a cruiser captain. The command track fire is going to be better um, because because it gives your allies threat reduction um, for how much like for how much threat they're they're doing versus how much the effective threat that the enemies are receiving from the damage that your allies are actually doing. If your allies are not well coordinated, I would say just use shield frequency remodulation, and there's a subclass that gives you both of those. So that one's the ideal one for tanking, which is flight deck carriers. But um, in terms of the raw range, um, cruisers have have above average, average hull, and they have a they have below average in everything else. Slightly below average in shields, but basically average, and then maneuverability they are the lowest. Which I mean, it makes sense. Um, Star Trek Online is as typically classified cruisers as the slow, bulky type. Which I mean, it definitely makes sense. Most of them are definitely like that. Um, they have the highest durability of starships. They have cruiser commands to help make up for their Lackluster mastery package, and they always have eight weapons. Because of all that stuff, though, unlike all of the other classes, like if we have a, actually, I've got a separate slide on this, but briefly here, um, cruisers rely upon their their specialization seating more than the other classes when it comes to to, to doing damage and doing threat and stuff in in this game. They they rely upon the specialization in the bridge after seating, and it's because. Engineering abilities just aren't as great as science abilities or tactical abilities. It's just the way it is. Like outside of tanking, they, they just aren't that remarkable. Um, same thing with the master packages. And so because of that, combined with them having the lowest average mobility, and that warbirds actually make them way, way worse. Again, there'll be another slide just going over that. I was half tempted to make I was I was trying to go on a range when I was initially making the slideshow, and then I was like, then I was recording, I was like, you know, I'm doing a lot of things that I wanted to do in the like TLDR video, but then I'm probably just going to take these out and put them in that, in that slideshow instead. So, yeah, I've, I've been working on like three different slideshows at the same time. And so those slides I, I took out, put into that slideshow just to make this video slightly more bearable for you all. Um, so anyway, cruisers, generally speaking, are the basically are the weakest chassis to work around, uh, at least the we weakest general chassis. There are some subclasses that are way better than others for sure, though. Um, as for the regular cruiser subclass of all of the engineering starships, 
Um, they have average of basically everything compared to other, other cruisers, um, with the exception of turn. They have slightly lower turning. Um, but their one big advantage is that they have all four cruiser commands. So for basically any play style besides using, using dual cannons, general, regular, run-of-the-mill cruisers can actually do. You want to do tanking, they can do that. You want to do energy damage, they can do that. Uh, you want to do torpedo stuff, they can do that. Um, the problem is um, they have basically the exact same durability as dreadnought cruisers. And dreadnought cruisers get access to dual cannons and a hangar bay. So that's a slight knock to this subclass. And it's why for a while, a lot of us in community have basically said, please stop giving us cruisers. Give us dreadnought cruisers if you want to give us a cruiser. Or if you want a light cruiser, I guess you can give us a multi multi mission cruiser now because they invented that, that subclass um, just, just recently. That, that's really the knock against cruisers right now is that they don't have access to dual cannons while well, every single other subclass does and every single other subclass has some cool things going for them sand cruisers are are the well-rounded one really that can do basically anything besides the dual cannons that's their one really big weakness on on the other hand battle cruisers are like the other end of, of the spectrum besides command track fire which, which they do not have um, they generally speaking are are the the DPS kings when it comes to raw weapon DPS when, when it comes to cruisers. Um, they they replace one of the um, mash packages with crit severity, which is, which is about as good as you can get on the chassis of cruisers, unfortunately. So I, I, as I mentioned with um, like warships and, and destroyers, battle cruisers are the equivalent of, of of a warship and destroyer in terms of the raw like. So sub subclass category for for cruisers. This is the general um, D DPS option for cruisers. And when we actually look at a lot of the um, a lot of the best co combinations for, for damage, they do often fall on the battle cruiser chassis. And that that extra fifty percent crit severity does help with with that. Um, now, can you still tank on these? For sure. Uh, if you're, you're going to tank on them, just use, use shield frequency, re frequency remodulation and you're good to go. You don't have really too much of an issue with that. You want to do energy damage, weapon system efficiency. You want to do torpedo damage. Strategic maneuvering is definitely the one that you want to use. Um, so yeah, um, they're still reasonably durable. Um, the problem is if you had the exact same bridge officer seating on the escort chassis, on almost any of them, those escorts would still out DPS the battle cruiser, and that's that's really the knock to the to the cruisers subclasses in general. And so, what you're actually going to notice is most of the strongest bridge after combinations are going to actually end up being on the cruiser chassis, because Cryptic still wants to have that potential growth to basically give you the same ship, but sell it to you again and have it do more damage on a different chassis. So. Quite often, whenever Cryptic experiments with new things, they will experiment on one of the cruiser subclass chassis first, um, basically to see if something's really, really good or not, or really, 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 really broken. So, cool, okie dokie. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, like just um, alongside that, if you actually look at, look at the averages for, for the stats, battle cruisers actually are, are in a fine state. They're okay on their base, values versus other cruisers and, and they have higher maneuverability so outside of that they aren't that terrible they're actually pretty good for cruisers at least on the other hand battle cruiser or sorry um, dreadnought cruisers have more issues now instead of instead of crit severity uh, dreadnought cruisers get crit chance which still is a dps increase but it's not as impactful as crit severity so battle cruisers are, are still the preferred option um but again they, they still are they still have dual cannons. Um, their cruiser commands are weapons system efficiency and command track fire, which I typically call dreadnought cruiser commands in the Star Trek comparison stuff. Um, really, the issues with these ships is that they have some of the lowest maneuverability of, of, of any cruiser subclass, and they they lack the strategic maneuvering um, cruiser command to counteract that. So basically, they're, they're meant to be slow, bulky cruisers that you can't fix to be less slow in in their bulkiness and slowness so um 
what that honestly means is that in many ways, if you wanted to do stuff in a Dreadnought Cruiser, if there happens to be a Juggernaut that's doing the same thing, the Juggernaut's just gonna, gonna perform way better. So that, that, that's kind of the unfortunate thing about Dreadnought Cruisers. They, they're still decent, they're, they're still good, um, but again, because of the raw chassis itself, there is a lot that you have to overcome to make them actually perform and, and do well. Um, frigates, on the other hand, don't need as much to worry about. Um, their actual raw stats are, are, are pretty extreme here. They have really low hull and shields for, for a cruiser, and they have really high maneuverability. Um, and because of this, um, actually, the, the, these, these are one of the few ships that people were asking, you know, why didn't I, I, I put this on, on the escort tier list? Um, whenever this, this, one, this, this one I read it. Um, because they're like, why do you have juggernauts here, but you don't have frigates? Well, because I went base it on bridge officer seating and actual stuff there instead of instead of just raw maneuverability. Because it'd be really hard, frankly, to make hard cut lines saying, okay, if a starship is between a 10 to 15 turn rate and 40 to 60 inertia and 16 to 18 impulse, then it's going to be here in this list. I mean. We we would get to the point that it would just it, it would become really stupid and, and comical trying to go from like least maneuverable, somewhat maneuverable, and most maneuverable starships, and people w would still be complaining there. Um, and it's why I made my list the way that I did. Generally speaking, Commander Science was one list. Generally speaking, Commander Tactical was one, and generally speaking, Commander Engineering was another. I had two exceptions for two cruisers because there there were two cruisers two cruisers that had two hangar bays that lacked cruiser commands and weren't warbirds so it, it was clear that they weren't actually meant to be cruisers because they actually had regular warp cores and still lacked the cruiser commands so that's why they got shifted to other other tier lists um as for as for frigates themselves um their rough durability is is actually about what you would expect for warships and destroyers um and that's really their main weakness is that warships and destroyers are still going to out DPS these guys, but frigates have a really, really um, flexible seating because all, all frigates have really flexible seating. Um, and you also have offensive cruiser commands for, for this, this subclass of, the, of weapon power cost reduction and extra turn rate and flight speed. So if you're doing weapon damage or if, if you're doing torpedo damage, these things are going to still be okay as long as there's the bridge officer seating to back you up. Unfortunately, we haven't received any frigates yet that have command seating. Um, so you, that's not really a realistic thing to, to do right now unless you have other captains in your pre-made that are doing uh, command track fire, or not command track fire, um, contract trade firepower three for you. Then you, can, then you can still do it in a frigate. But it's definitely not ideal though. Um, in terms of this magic package, it does have the most offensive magic package of all of them. Because not only do you have crit, um, crit severity, but you also have five accuracy. And for those of you that don't know, if, if you have high enough accuracy, um, it actually overflows into extra, extra crit chance for your build. Um, it's why the ideal uh, mastery package for a weapon-based um, build is from Warships and Destroyer that have crit chance, crit severity, flat 10% flat damage, and five accuracy. That's why that one's the best one. And then Juggernauts just replace the five accuracy with HP HP regen for three seconds, but have the other three. Um, again, they still have dual cannons. They are highly mobile. Um, and again, it's those other, other weaknesses that, that hold the sh that hold the ship back from being a really, really super excellent um, cruiser. And it, it, it's still a good cruiser, um, but 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 it can excel like like a lot of the escorts can, frankly. Um, multi mission cruisers, um, just like I mentioned earlier. Um, they are essentially battle cruisers that instead of having this this crit severity here um they they have a, a hangar bay instead and um so that's a partial strength and a partial weakness um only having one hangar bay doesn't really give you a ton of good um hang, hang, hangar pets available to your build um, however for less experienced players an extra hangar bay does mean generally it's going to be an easier time for a lot of those types of players um, your cruiser commands are also slightly different. You have weapon and and shields available to you. 
So it's different than weapon engines of frigates or weapon aimed attract fire of you know, dreadnought cruisers. So it is definitely um, you, you unique for sure. Um, but without the engine one, that means that this probably isn't going to be the best torque boat because uh, you're not going to have the maneuverability for that. But you know, it still could be. In, it's still, it still will be an okay ship. In terms of these these averages again, these averages are mostly those these stats here because we are including the um, the nine um, Sea Storm Mega Bundle um, Command Battle Cruisers from from the Sea Storm. But but if you compare those to you know our 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 two tier six two tier six multi mission Marines in, in the game, the Fleet Malachowski and the and the Legendary Miranda, um, you're really going to see that the stats are basically the same, and it really reflects it in in the same way. Inertia is is a smidge lower. And turning is a little bit lower than what we expect from battle cruisers, but I mean, whenever we've looked at the balanced version versus the one hanger version of the other two tier lists, this is what we're kind of expecting. We're expecting the ship to be a little bit lower in it in its um, stats versus like the standard or the balanced version, frankly, and that is what what we're seeing here too. Um, if we're going to work around that, these ships are actually fine. Um, but again, a lot of people would definitely prefer to have flight deck carriers because they have two hangar bays and thus they have access to more pets or better um, debuffing frigates, frankly. Um, especially with like, like, like a while ago, whenever we got these, these support carriers in the game, I think it might have even been a year ago at this point now because it's, it's been that long. Um, yeah, last, last year we got those four support carriers um, and they gave us really nice frigates, um, really comparable to the Styx's um, Terran Empire frigates, when it, because they both have Suppression Barrage three, and and they have a debuff ability on on them too. Not as good as the Terran Empire frigates, but they're very comparable, um, which, which makes tanking like a Styx much more accessible to more starships, which is which is always great. Um, its two cruiser commands are not on the offense though. You either get additional shield regeneration and shield resistance or or threat re threat protection for your allies. So if you're not gonna be if if, if you aren't a tank flying a flight deck carrier, 100 percent pick pick the shield one because at least your pets while they're in the aura will, will last a little bit longer. But yeah, um the big thing is hurting this ship is no weapon cruiser command and no mobility cruiser command. Um but yes, this is clearly the best subclass in general for tanking. Um, I mean, I liked flight deck cruisers back in the day prior to them becoming flight deck carriers, and this extra utility just made them better. Um, it's kind of funny that way. Um, but yes, as a result of being um, having having two hangers, it is expected for them to have lower turning and inertia. What you will find, though, is a lot of the older flight deck carriers that when they were released were initially really called flight deck cruisers actually had good mobility at least in reference to their raw durability so you actually are going to see that a lot more um, with a lot of the older stuff i mean like e like even looking at like the, like the base stats of like some of the newest flight deck carriers you're going to notice that like a lot of the base stats are actually pretty similar to the older ones which is that the newer ones have better um, Starship Master Pack, just frankly. So, anyway, that's it for them. Um, moving on, and as I've alluded to earlier, cruisers are the weakest by far of the three general classes of starships. Like, like if if I handed you a starship that was that was that was completely science seating, would there be much of an issue making it do lots of damage? Nope. In fact, a lot of the best. Um, science DPS ships in the game are completely science abilities and with like nothing else or like or like an ensign and engineering seat at most as thus those ships that happen to have a good commander specialization tend to be the ones that are really 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 strong and that's why this the lockbox Vern is so strong on the other hand commander tactical starships if you handed a, a, a DPS captain they said here is here here is a raider you have to make every single seat tactical have have fun could they make it work? Yeah, it'd be it'd be a slight struggle because you've got no mobility stuff from from, from the engineering abilities that aren't there. But otherwise, it's still workable. Um, you you can easily make a Drake build um, by doubling up on on abilities, or um, you can use a lot of the passive cooldown stuff today 
And then it's just the lack of emergency power to weapons is really going to be the biggest hindrance to, to the ship. And then if you have special stations on top of it, it just makes it work even better. On the other hand, if you have one of one of these people, let's say a frigate, and tell them, hey, okay, your challenge is to make every single seat engineering. You can't use any science abilities. You can't use any tactical abilities. You can't use any specialization abilities. You just have to go out and only use engineering abilities and now do the deeps. Cruisers don't work very well whenever they're set up that way. And a couple of the ships towards the very, very bottom of this list are basically telling you you have to do that. That's why that they're at the very bottom of, of, of this list. Starships that are set up like that, that have very poor specializations, are going to struggle in this game. As thus, unlike escorts and science vessels, cruisers are much more reliant upon having those other non-engineering abilities and having specializations in their starship itself so that they can perform really well. Without those other advantages and without things like cruiser commands and such, cruisers fall behind and lag behind the other classes. And we need also factor in that match packages don't help either. It's something that they really do need to struggle and work really hard at to overcome. Now, can you definitely do it? For sure. And if, if you want to tank on them, can you tank on them easier than the other ship, than the other classes in general? Yep. And, and so generally speaking, when you pick, pick a cruiser, the general go-to is like, hey, I'm either going to be doing tanking or I'm, or I'm picking a specific ship that's been known to do great damage and I'm picking it for, for that particular thing. That being said, um, and so this is something I might have said a couple times, probably offhandedly, but if many of you have probably noticed this a lot in the past, I don't typically show engineering warbirds on, on my Starship comparisons videos. And that's because I think they are hot garbage. And so to demonstrate this in clear terms, I'm going to show you what science vessels gain and lose what tactical vessels gain and lose, and then what engineering vessels have to additionally lose to gain stuff with them in particular. So starting with science vessels, what do you typically lose? A little bit of power levels. Your power levels are slightly lower because you have the singularity core. To gain a, a battle cloak, singularity core and singularity abilities, which a lot, a lot of people, people don't care about. And so ultimately it's just, hey, I have a little bit lower power levels to always have, have, a, have a battle cloak. If I have, have, a, have a science warbird. Honestly, generally speaking, for a lot of those starships, it's like, eh, that's not that big of a deal. It's, not, it's, it's a lot of annoyance, but it's not that huge of, of a deal. And technically, they some of them get dual cannons if they're if they were if they would have technically been a regular science vessel instead of any of the other subtypes. Um, but if you're getting dual cannons, it's because it's only a six weapon science vessel that's actually going to become a science warbird. So it's not really much of a, much of a benefit to have access to dual cannons for the most part. Air tactical starships, on the other hand, they have lower power levels. And if the starship happens to be a warship or a destroyer, they additionally don't gain the crit severity in the master packets that you would normally expect from warships and destroyers. So as I mentioned in past videos, the balanced version of starships um, they either get an extra weapon in terms of in terms of science vessels, going from a regular science vessel to like, like a science spearhead, you gain an extra weapon slot. For tactical starships and engineering starships, instead of gaining something else like that, you gain crit severity in your mastery package to get additional like teeth and oomph behind your starship. If you happen to be a a tactical warship or destroyer and you're a warbird variant of that, you don't get that crit severity in your mastery package. So not only are you losing those power levels, but you're losing that crit severity as well to have the Singularity Core and Battle Cloak, which overall is, is a slight nuisance and makes warship and destroyer variants of, of tactical warbirds a little bit worse. And that's why I have put this picture right here um, as the prime example here. So for instance, recently, relatively recently anyway, we got a... We, we got the fleet tactical warships, uh, the fleet tactical simple warships ships anyway. And there was four variants. There was the Federation version, the Klingon version, the Romna version, and the Gemini Vanguard version. 
But what you may have noticed in, in I, when I did that Starship Persons video, I didn't mention the Warp Word as much because, well, the Klingon version and the Romulan version both got battle cloaks. But guess what? The Romulan version was losing crit severity to get the Singularity Core and abilities. When you're comparing it on like the actual statistical standpoint between the two ships, you basically have to ask yourself, is that Singularity Core and the Singularity Abilities from the Singularity Core actually worth 15% crit severity for, my, for my, my build? That's what you actually have to ask yourself in there. And most DPS players, I think, are going to tell you, I'd rather just take a regular Warp Core and get the 15% crit, um, crit severity. And so for, for that bundle, realistically, um, you're, pick, you're picking the, the Klingon version, for highest HP and, and a battle cloak, you're picking the Jemina Vanguard one for, for the most damage with the Vanguard wingman mechanic, or you're picking the Federation or the Romulan version because of the looks. Frankly, and that's just really the way that that, that that bundle worked. So it's a downside that frequently comes up with them, but it, it doesn't always show up for them. And if it's not that subclass, then it's then it's less of a nuisance, frankly. On the other hand, engineering starships have even more that they lose. And not only do you have lower power levels, not only for all but two of the engineering warbirds, you should have had crit chance, but you didn't. Um, you also, on average, have lower mobility versus your Federation Klingon counterparts, which sucks. And additionally, you don't even get your cruiser commands. So let's break this down a little bit and just to re re rephrase this. To be an engineering warbird, your punishment to have a singular Lurdy Corps and, and a battle cloak, you have less mobility than your Federation and Klingon counterparts. You don't get cruiser commands to counteract that lower mobility. You have lower power levels, so you can't put as much power into engine power, so, so you're going to feel this lower mobility and maneuverability even worse on, on your starship. And additionally, you don't even get crit severity for the vast majority of those ships that should have had crit severity. And all that supposedly is worth it to have, have a battle cloak and a singularity core and singularity abilities. Now, yes, um, t technically, like one of those benefits of being a warbird is that you get dual cannons. But as I've noted, pretty much nearly every single um, variant besides the American Worker war Warbirds that would get dual cannons, I have looked in the list. Pretty much every single version there was a Klingon version that had a dual cannons. So you weren't actually gaining dual cannons for the most part to be an engineering warbird. So dual cannons is not really something to consider when we're talking about these ships. Unlike our tactical starships, I cannot recommend realistically any of the engineering warbirds in the game i can't i legitimately cannot um now when i was initially making the tier list stuff for for today um i initially my initial offset was to put every single engineering warbird into d tier but then it got to the point that there were so many starships in d and e tier that it was kind of ridiculous and it, it was like over half the list was just D and E tier. And I'm like, I know that's probably right. But I want to be at least nice to the player base. And so even though I hate engineering warbirds with a passion, for the sake of my comment section, um, I'm going to be judging engineering warbirds as if they were cruisers or battle cruisers. And assuming that they have cruiser commands and such. I know that's technically not reality, but that is what I have to do for this video. Now, um, Cryptic Studios, if you happen to be watching this video, my tall orders and ask for you. 
um, for all of, of the Warbirds in general in, in this game. First off, please, re please remove Singularity Circuitry from the Starship Master Package because it makes Warbirds really weird versus the other um, versus the other starships and factions inside the game. I think it should just be gone and it should either just be built into the Singularity Core and Singularity stuff in general or it should just be gone, period. Because from people that I've talked to, and then I don't talk to a ton of people, but at least I get lots and lots of emails here at least, and most people don't use Singularity Cores and Singularity Abilities. When we go to Reddit, does people talk about Singularity Cores and Singularity Abilities that much? Not too much. It's there from time to time, but not too much. So I, I really think that it's, it's a mechanic that shouldn't be actively punishing you in your, in your Starship Mastery Package for not using. So that's my side point one, because if, if you do that point, then the loss for crit severity for these two categories goes away entirely. And then it's the tactical starships are, are the same as science starships that you have the slightly less in power levels. So if you, if you want to use the singularity core and battle cloaks, you can, but if not, then it's not the end of the world. Additionally, I know that lower mobility can't be fixed on old starships because I know cryptic is not keen on readjusting old starships like stats. They're, they're more keen on just releasing new starships instead that fix the stats except for the legendary to Derodex where Cryptic had to get yelled at to fix the stats. <sighs> My proposal instead, alongside fixing the Starship Master Packages so that, that crit severity is going to be in there when it should be in there, give Engineering Warbirds Cruiser Commands. It's not that hard. And in fact, in this video, I've basically organized where every single ship should go. So it shouldn't be that difficult for y'all to figure out what ships deserve what cruiser commands. I've, I've got that slide earlier in the video and you can simply go back to that or go to the PDF to just download that and take it to your own spreadsheets that you have um, at Cryptic HQ and, and put that in there. Yep, yeah, and I do get it. It'll take you a little bit to do that, but I think that would help the player base because I mean, Let's be this would be real for a moment. Like the, the Deridex is known as this horrible ship to fly. And I just outlined why the Deridex sucks to fly. It has lower base mobility than its equivalents of, of, of the galaxy and and the and the Nectav Negvar. I can't remember which variant's the technical one in, in the game. But versus it, it, its other faction variants, it has lower mobility than the other ones. It doesn't have cruiser command, so it can't counteract the fact that it's lower mobility, and it's got lower power levels. So you, you have less power for your um for your engines. So you can't counteract it really very well from, from the base stuff besides the other extreme mobility stuff that all starships get, frankly. And to top that all off, it doesn't have the crit severity of what you expect from starships of, of that subclass. All right, I think I've said enough of that soapbox for now. Um, I might go up on that again when we get to the um, the, the final video where I summarize everything. Um, so yeah, as, as for the bell curve, my rule for the other videos has been more of like the 10, 20, 40, 20, 10 split. There's even ignoring the issues with engineering warbirds there are still going to be a lot more here in D and E tier than there have been in previous videos. Um, that's also to help emphasize where the worst escort in my escort video would fall when it, when it comes to our um, cruisers inside this video. Basically, at the end of C and the beginning of D is where that worst escort falls in. And it's, not, it's probably not going to be where y'all ex expect it to be. Anyway, with that all said, let's dive into the tier list itself. And to start off with today um, is going to be S tier. Now, I've hinted at this ship several times in, in the other videos. Um, and, and as a reminder, for S tier, S tier is, is, is a starship that I consider overall, consider, with, the, with the consideration for all play styles, to be the best um, starship for that general class of starships. 
Now for cruisers, there actually are a decent amount of good cruisers inside the game. However, there is one cruiser that sticks out and it is the sticks. Um, it happens to be a lockbox search, so it's not a promo ship unlike most of the ships in A tier. Um, but when you look, look at its stats, it's got good hull, it's got a 1.25 shield, so it actually means it's actually, it has meaningfully high enough shields to matter for, for tanking. Still has great hull. Um, its maneuverability is not great, but at least it's not six. Um, so it's, it has above average what you kind of expect, generally speaking, for Dreadnought Cruisers. Um, and its bridge officer is not bad either. Got Lieutenant Commander Command with a Lieutenant Commander Universal Intel and Ensign Universal with its Lieutenant Science. So, and then your one engineering seat is Engineering Command. So that means it's going to work well for torpedo boats. It's going to work really well for direction energy weapon based builds. Um, and it's, it's super excellent for tanking as well. Now, part of the tanking, not for everything, but what makes it excel and push to S tier is the debuffing frigates available to the ship. Now the Terran Empire frigates pretty much are the golden standard when, when it comes to debuffing frigates right now. It's, it's one really, really big downside is that it has a quantum torpedo launcher on it, which does mean it's not the most I, I, ideal for a lot of super, super coordinated ISC runs. Um, I know some people are, might want to see this and be like, oh, Cal Yola said this is like probably the best tank. So I'm going to pick this up and slot Elite Terran Empire Frigates. Well, hold on for a moment, because to, you need to make sure that you talk with the rest of your team in, in your pre-made team before you go into ISC, because they have to understand, by the way, these awesome frigates have a torpedo. And so whatever, you know, kinetic boat that you're trying to boost in your, in your ISC run, needs to, uh, needs to understand that you're, that you're, um, that your really, really good frigate that's going to be debuffing targets is going to steal some of the concentrated firepower procs. And in a lot of the groups that I've been in, some of them are not okay with that. And some of them prefer that I just didn't slot the slot the, hang, the hanger at all. Um, so like it, it really depends upon like kind of like what tier of, of like players that, that you're with as, as to whether this is even worth it to deal with. Um, or even even the, the comparable support frigates for um, for flight tech carriers is even is even worth it. I imagine at some point, and crypto, if you're listening, make sure you pay attention right now. I imagine at some point we will get a new support frigate or a hangar pet like a, like one of these frigates. I might be able to be equipped on any starship with just one hang, hangar bay. That is basically these ships, but without the, the torpedo launcher. I imagine at some point Cryptic will release a ship, a, a, at least a, a hangar pet like that in the future. Um, but for now, and the general rule is that this is, this is like just about the best one. Uh, like there, there are some other ones that do some rough debuffing. Like, like I think there, there's some Herc pets that, that do like some, some of the best in ter terms of impromptu other options, but there's, but there's a decent amount of them that spawn. So that can cause issues as well, depending upon, you know, how, how many mines are spawning for your, for your torpedo kinetic boat that's trying to do lots and lots of damage in IC. So again, make sure you talk with, your, with whoever person you know, you're trying to boost for IC and HUC to see if they're okay with, with this hangar pet. Um, yeah, what, what makes it really good, they get Suppression Barrage 3 and they get Attack Pattern Beta 3. Beta 3 is a minus 50 damage resistance rating debuff to an enemy every 30 seconds. Um, this is very, very potent. There's also Agonizing Ag 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 Agony Ray, which is, which is an, another much minor debuff that's like every 15 seconds. Um, which again, like if we're doing comparative things here for the Support Frigate, Support Frigate has Sensor Scan 1 for, for a single debuff, and then you have um, Scattering Field um, that actually buffs your, your team a little bit more. So like there are very similar things going on, but if we're talking about the most talked about big things, Suppression Barrage 3 and, th and then a single major debuffing ability. And both the Terran Empire Frigate and the Mail Support Frigates have that. The Terran Empire Frigate is miles above its closest competitor for, for that, frankly. And so when you consider all that, 
and that that one really good hangar pack can only be used on this one starship, this ship has to be here. Um, and again, whenever Cryptic eventually or at some point releases better frigates, hangar pads, or unlocks hangar pads to other, other starships, we might see other starships start to take the place of, of the sticks eventually. But for now, this is still a super solid ship for a lot of play styles inside the game. You want to do broadsiding, you want to do torpedoes, you want to do tanking. This ship can do all those super, super well. It can do technically passable sci um, passable um, off meta science because you've got six science abilities potentially with this ship and doing an off meta site torp build with contra firepower and then high yield three. You can make it work on this ship. You can technically do scatter volley, but you only have four four weapons, so it's not going to be as ideal. But they're workable with this ship, but they super excel in three different roles. So for me, it has to be here in S2. Cool. All right. Um, moving on from there is going to be A tier. And here is it's going to be a price, a group of starships that a lot of you are probably going to expect um, when, when it comes to A tier starships. It's because it's, this is where a lot of the promo ships honestly end up, which is to be expected. Um, Cryptic likes to make money, and cruisers are still a popular subclass because even though they don't necessarily have the highest damage, it's easy to get their damage because they have higher hull. So that is one of the bigger advantages to cruisers. Um, now for the top of A tier for me, has to be the Merrick Worker Flight Deck Carriers. Um, when these guys came out, they were a bit overpowered because of the unique beams that are available to them and then Cryptic nerfed them and then nerfed those beams again. Fortunately, they, they gave these ships access to dual cannons, which definitely did help. Um, but that definitely wasn't the intention when these ships released. Several people like me complained that they didn't have, have access to dual cannons because thematically it just didn't make sense for them not to have dual cannons, especially when you have a T7 that um, was supposed to be available to Romulans and this was the only tier 6 at the time that they could access and it didn't have access to dual cannons. Fortunately, that has been, been fixed now and they reclassified this as a flight deck carrier instead of flight deck cruisers whenever they, they came out. I had a really, really bad video talking about and, and complaining about the ships whenever they, they came out. I was very upset which is why I, I made a video like the day after whenever I saw the comments and was like, and, and, and I was, was, was very affected by it. Like, oh, okay, I made a mistake. I'm going to go ahead, ahead and fix that. Um, so yeah, with all of that in the past and behind us, these ships are, are very, very good. They, ha they have a 5 3 weapon layout. They have good hull and they are very, very good in maneuverability too. Nine turn, 18 impulse. Honestly, it's, Harder to get better than that in the game without suffering on on your hull and shields. So, very very strong. Um, Commander Mirror Worker, Lieutenant Bar Tactical, and Sense Science, which means if you're doing an Ox to Bat build, or if you're just using doing doing the passive stuff um, now. Back when this came out, it was definitely Ox Ox to Bat. But um, if you're not doing tanking, you can you can definitely do some of the passive stuff with, with the Boimler effect and not have to deal with engineering stuff and replace all this with Mirror Worker if if you wish. Um, it's definitely a platform that works well for both of those things. Um, even though technically you can't get Suppression Barrage 3 in the Starship, thanks to having two hangar bays again, you can use the, these support carrier frigates and put those frigates on these Starships too. So you can still have good damage with some debuffing being applied to enemies as well. It's not going to be as effective as if you had Suppression Barrage 3 as well on your ship, but it's... It's like the best thing that you, that you can have for a Starship when you don't have Suppression Barrage 3 available to your Starship, frankly. So, I mean, it is very impactful. Um, if this ship had Lieutenant Commander Command instead of Lieutenant Command, this would have 100% been the S-tier Starship. But I think they, like a lot of times you'll notice this, they'll put Lieutenant Command instead of Lieutenant Commander Command because they often tend those ships to be tanking ships instead of um, DPS ships, frankly. And this is definitely a good ship for tanking, but it's still a very, very reasonable ship for damage as well. Um, definitely an, an improvement over, over, the, over the fleet Merrick Worker Battlecruisers, although that you will see them shortly. Um, 
but these are still very, very awesome ships. Very, very flexible um, for many different play styles. Technically, it doesn't have four base tactical consoles, but it's got three, and you got a dash one because of Merc Worker. So, um, great, great ships here. Um, because the Promo D7 does have a Bow Cloak, but it's otherwise exactly the same as the Promo Discovery Constitution, uh, the D7 is the superior platform if you're going from a pure stats perspective. That being said, there's only one um, Discovery D7. While there are three different visual variants of the, the Discovery Era Constitution. So, if, so from a Space Barry perspective, I understand why a lot of people will still pick this ship over this one because either they don't care about the battle cloak or they're like they prefer space barbie more than the 100 percent dippity top um, perf um like performance metrics you know and i totally get that i mean we have we have the promo version here we have the legendary discovery constitution and we have the mirror um discovery constitution warship so if there's three different visual variants right now to mix and match the looks for for the ship alongside many shields and so i totally get it um nonetheless D7 is the better option. Um, extremely solid. And because of the flight deck carrier advantage and privilege, it's it's basically got almost everything and two hang two hangar base. And so for me, it's gotta be here at the very top of A tier. Now, right behind her, and pretty much neck and neck, um, for me is is a section 31 command hill heavy have a heavy bow cruiser. Now, maybe it's a little bit weird to put a battle cruiser here, but the thing is, this isn't just a battle cruiser. This is basically a battle cruiser with hangar base because of swarm mode. Swarm mode, the way that swarm mode basically works in Star Trek Online is that they're basically DPS only hangar pets. That's basically how they pretty much work. Um, and for the moment, they're doing good damage. I imagine if we went a couple of years and crypto release better and better hang hanger pets eventually swarm mode would probably lag behind the other modern hanger pets and it would fall farther down this tier list but for now swarm mode is competitive and great um yes you technically get get a cloak with this thing although it's a different wording because it's an area where federation are not supposed to have cloaks yet um it's got solid seating um it doesn't have to have any, any force sign seating either um which is nice um Technically, one incident engineering seat, but the other seats the commander's engineering command, so it's still a very solid torpedo platform, and it's decent for tanking as well. Um, it does have lieutenant intel, so lieutenant commander intel, um, and it doesn't have the debuffing stuff that the sticks has. Um, but it is a 5 3 layout, so it's going to be a little bit better for dual cannons. Um, and other thing that I will note as well um, this impulse technically is low. I did not include this in the actual official numbers for impulse just because even though that is technically the number um that is not realistic of what is actually going on with this ship and i didn't think it would be fair to include this ship into the actual totals just because um swarm mode does decrease your durability and increases your maneuverability and so and they didn't do the official post for what that whole and maneuverability changes to whenever you go in, into swarm mode so I didn't do that in there. Therefore, did not put that in the actual list for actual composite numbers. That was something. That's something that I think I should just put out there, um, in case y'all are are wondering, um, because this is a because from a base stats perspective, this is probably the most de deceiving starship of all of them inside of, of of the game. Okay, maybe there might be one or two that's that's worse besides the engineering warbirds, but in terms of the base stats perspective, this one is very deceiving. Um, still a great ship um, if you're doing a, a torp boat type of thing and you don't like the sticks I think the sticks is probably better than this ship but this is this is right up there with, with the sticks for, for the torpedo stuff just that the, the sticks is miles above this thing when it comes to tanking so I, I have to put the section 31 ship here a distant point behind those ships is the promo inquiry I've said this many times on, on the channel. From a fundamental standpoint, I don't like this ship. Um, but I can't deny that it is one of the better cruisers inside the game. 
it does have good durability. It's got good mobility, and is and it is Merrick Worker intelligence seating, which for an energy based starship is fine. Obviously, Merrick Worker Temporal is definitely going to be a better option, but um, Merrick Worker Intel is still fine, um, and it's reasonably flexible as well, um, similar to what you would see from like the sticks and such. Um, four base tactical consoles, so you're going to have six total because of Merrick Worker. Um, and it's on the Battlecruiser chassis, which is the second best chassis for, for DPS. Um, the Frigate one is better, but obviously they wouldn't want to make a Frigate with this insanely good set of specialization combinations because then otherwise it'd be hard for them to make better, unique, di differentiating options. You know, if they did a ship like this and they could release another one that's the exact same thing, but, but it's Ensign Science instead of Lieutenant Science. They, they release a ship like this that's Commander Merrick Worker, Lieutenant Commander Intel. Well, it's an Engineering Merrick work Worker, and the rest seats are all universal. It, and that's partly why it, it, it's their cryptic is less hesitant to release a lot, a lot of the Raider subclasses because releasing one is like releasing, releasing several different other versions of, of similar bridge officers seating in just one ship because of how flexible that those platforms are. But um, with that all said, it's still a solid ship. Um, do I personally think it's worth getting this ship over like the Valbor Juggernaut or the Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carriers for the promo box price? I would say no. Um, like I, I do get that from a weapon standpoint. If it, from a pure weapon standpoint, it, it's better than the um, promo like Discovery D7 and promo Discovery Constitution. That I get. But those ships have other things that they're able to give you too. Um, if we went from, from a pure weapon standpoint, the Valor Juggernaut just has a better mastery package behind it too. Now, with that all said, of course, we have Space Barber 2 considering here as to why more people fly this thing and why there's a lot more records on the inquiry over some of the other ships. And that's because, well, at least you can kit bash this thing with other starships if you don't like the looks of the base starship. If you fly promo Discovery D7, if you fly the promo Bob War Juggernaut, you don't really have parts to kit bash with. So that makes some of these other ships that are slightly less optimal more fun. Also, the bridge offers are seen, even though it is technically less optimal, um, it is easier for a lot of players to, um, to build on these starships, frankly, um, than some of the other more conventional ones. They were at least from a DPS side for slightly more conventional. So, um, that I, I I get for easing in. Why don't you do DPS? Can you do tanking with this thing too? Yeah. You just use the shield one and you um, just do what you can. Um, it, it'll still do well. Um, I think Maricor Worker Flight Day Carriers are miles above this thing because of the, su the suppression barrage frigates that you, you can put on that. But if you don't care about those and rather just have extra raw damage for your ship, I guess this is an okay replacement. That being said, um, another starship that's like right alongside this one that I think is really, really good and should get its praise is the original TLS Connie. Now, for me and my personal list, and I've said this before, prior to these, these, the new support carry frigates from last, from last year, whenever those came out, Prior to that, I considered the TOS Connie and the Discovery Connie, both from her promo packs, at basically the same level. Um, because of Suppression Barrage Frigates out, I did have to knock down this ship a couple of pegs. Um, it, but if, if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you're wanting Recursive Shearing 3 plus Concentrate Firepower 3 on, on your ship with Torpedo High Yield 3, I think this is the best option inside of the game. It does suck that this is on the cruiser chassis, the regular cruiser subclass chassis instead of any of the other, other better ones. But hey, at least you got full cruiser commands. You got you got bucket reconstruction, which is nice. Um, and you got four base tactical consoles. So it's an okay ship. Um, and for its seating, it, it's hard to get much better than this. Um, there are some other promo ships that have tried and failed to um, do some of the similar things that this ship can do, but um, they at least pretend that, that they're better than this ship because, hey, we're newer, so it must be better. 
this is this is still a great ship. It's still very maneuverable. It's still reasonably durable. Um, if you want to do torpedo stuff on this thing, it'll it'll do it. You want to do tanking on on this thing, it, it can also do it. You don't have suppression barrage three though, and you don't have hangar pets that do suppression barrage three or debuffing stuff for this ship because it's just a standard cruiser. It doesn't have hang hangar pets, so there are those things against this ship, and so. It has to go towards the lower end of a tier versus the upper end. Still a fantastic ship. If you're doing torpedo stuff and don't want um, Call of Mercy or, or Artillery 3 for your starship, I think this is a fantastic option to choose instead. Cool. Okie dokie. Um, after that is where I would put one of my favorite ships in the entire game. The Voth Rampart. Formerly known in its tier 5 version as the Voth Bastion. I have a lot of memories with the Voth Bastion. Um, like back in the day, um, you know, when I would get bored of doing IC and HUC and I would just, just, just want to queue in, you know, normal and advanced queues, I often would take my budget bills in, into there and I would just do randoms and normal and, and, and advanced difficulty and just, and just go into either the, the, uh, the common ones or whenever we got the random TFO stuff, I would just queue randoms and just do that and I would just look for players that were struggling. I would just look around and be like, okay, are there any players here that don't have a tier six starship yet? Or, and especially ones that just have a tier five and don't have tier five view. Um, so by the time tier five X existed, it was about the time the Voth Rampart got its, its or Voth Bastion got its tier six. And so I would just start lo lo looking around and then just, and I would be flying in a Voth Bastion and I would, I would see, okay, are there people struggling? And if there's someone in particular that struggled and like blew up several times, I would, you know, like right as the TFO was about the end, I would message him like, hey, I saw you were struggling. Would you like an ugly starship like, like mine? Because, hey, I've, I've got a couple in, in my account bank. And the ship happens to have a free tier 5 view upgrade has just built, built in as part of the ship. And over, over that, I gave out hundreds of Voth Bastions to people. And, and they appreciate it. Now, a lot of them would get tier sixes shortly thereafter because they realized how much tier five you actually mattered to starships. But um, that was what I did because Voth Bastions were dirt cheap on, on, on the exchange and people did not know that Voth Bastions were actually super good in this game. That was until Cryptic released the Voth Rampart and did um, the flight deck cruiser to flight deck carrier change and remove the Voth Bastion from the tier 5 boxes. That was a sad day, frankly. Um, I gave out the last couple of Voth Bastions that I had, a couple to different other players that I saw, and then I gave the rest to the couple of fleets that I, I were part of at the time. And I was like, okay, here's the last couple of them. Give it out to players that just have tier 5s. Don't, don't, have, don't have tier 5 view and can't afford tier 5 view. Um, but the Voth Rampart, frankly, at least, um, for me losing that ability to, to, to do that. I mean, I, I, from time to time, I still like hand out Hudsonok Escort or the Rojan Hunter Heavy Escorts now because that's like the last tier 5 view ship left in the tier 5 boxes. But um, at least the Voth Rampart is a good ship. And I'm thankful that it, it is at least a very good ship. Um, it's got full command scene. It's got Lieutenant Miracle Worker. Um, for re upside or downside, depending upon what type of your build you're doing, it's got Lieutenant Commander Science. And, um, so, depending on what you're doing, that might be an upside or a downside. Because Photon Crafter is going to be used in, in, in the build, typically. Um, it's got great stats. It sadly does have, have a six turn, so it's not great. But hey, it is, it is, it is a flight deck carrier. It's got a Commander Command Seat. Or inspiration mechanic stuff. Um, what you en end up seeing with with, the, with this starship is that this is pretty much a flight deck carrier variant of the sticks with Lieutenant Merrick Worker instead of Lieutenant Commander in Intel and minus one tactical console. Other than that, it's pretty much just the sticks again. And that's why you don't see the ship quite as much as as, as, you, as you do the sticks, because I mean they're both lockbox starships. Um, 
my gut feeling is that this, that this ship is probably the better tor torpedo boat than the sticks but that's just my gut feeling on that um i could definitely be wrong on that and so i'm being conservative and putting it this low on on the list i i do think the sticks and the rampart are both very very comparable ships um so like, like like if you saw a suggestion for each a torpedo boat, I think the the sticks could work. I think the section thirty one bow cruiser could work. I think the Voth rampart could all work really really well. Um, now between section thirty one ship and this ship, this ship is way cheaper because it's a lockbox versus a promo ship. So um, I still think the ship's awesome. I think the ship looks good too. Um, it also like like it, it to me it's it still feels enough Star Trek. But also with different finish shields, it can also feel like it's part of other sci-fi franchises too. Um, maybe that's just because it's me and I love the, the Voth Bastion and the Ramparts was just a partial upgrade. Um, I, I also did a rant on, on this on um, Reddit a, a little bit in a couple of comments and in a post because I was like, why can't the Voth Rampart use the Voth Bastion parts? <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, this, is, this is a great ship. Um, I, I like the ship. I fly the ship from time to time. Um, on my Voth themed character, because I've, I've got my own Voth themed character, because I like the show so much that I made a new character that was designed to basically just pretending that they're part of the Klingon Empire when they actually like flood the Federation stuff. Like, I I went full R R R P for a character because of how much I like I like this ship. The, the ship is good. Um, so T L D R the the ship is good. Do I think? You should be getting this over over to sticks. Eh. I think it comes down to whether you like the looks of the ship over over the sticks. Um, I think they both can serve very similar roles, and it's up to you as to whether what whether you you would prefer and be stuck with what the six is frigates, or whether you'd rather have this ship and have the higher flexibility of potential new hang hanger pets that might be better than the sticks's. Um, really strong frigates that Cryptic might release in the future. Still think it's a very strong ship. Of course, you know, they could always release a better ship than this in the future as well. Um, after that, we get is where I would put the legendary Od Odyssey. This ship is here because of the flagship set. Because, I mean, if we didn't have the flagship set, it would only be a single spec um, starship. And that doesn't really belong in A tier, frankly, um, especially for cruisers where cruisers, generally speaking, have um, issues with damage in the first place. So not having full spec is going to be an issue for them. Um, that being said, full command, and if you look at the starships, there might be a slight similarity in the bridge offer scene between these two ships. This is essentially the Dreadnought Cruiser downgraded variant of the Rampart. It loses Lieutenant Miracle Worker to get a, to get a tactical console and access to the flagship set. Well, and, and alongside losing a hangar bay because it's a dreadnought cruiser versus a flight deck carrier. So, um, in many ways, you know, if you're someone who isn't going to go for the Rampart or something, but hey, you're willing to go for the 10th anniversary Legendary bundle because it's an account and lock thing. The Odyssey does very similar things to what the Rampart does. Um, you, you have the flagship set if you really, really want the tank. You have suppression barrage three available to the ship. You still have the commander seat with double lieutenant commander that's the same as the uh, the Voth Rampart. You just don't have these suppression barrage frigates available to you. You don't have the super strong frigates of the the sticks because that's stuck to that specific um, dreadnought cruiser. But yeah, you got the flagship set. You still got a lot of the essential bare bones to still make a very solid ship with this. Um, And again, that's you know a lot of the minor things that we see with, with legendary ships. There's always something that they're trying to put in there to make legendary ships a little bit lacking, versus a lot of what you would see from lockbox and promo ships. And that's what what we're seeing here. Um, it doesn't know as well downgrade, but I think it is still an excellent starship because of of, of the flagship set. Um, now, if we discount a flagship set, this is probably a B tier starship because of not having suppression barrage frigates available to it in, in its hangar, hangar base. Still a great ship. Um, and again, it's another one of ships that has lots of kitbash options. So I, I, th I think the ship is awesome. 
Um, so yeah, if you have the 10th anniversary bundle and, and you're wanting to tank, I think this is a perfectly acceptable replacement to any of the other tanks higher than this in, in, the, in the tier list. However, right alongside uh, Legendary Odyssey is a surprise. It's a starship that I don't talk about too much on, on the channel, but I think it's good, especially with, with the Boimler effect, with not needing to use Photonic Officer as, as much for cooldowns anymore. We can now use a lot of the fun stuff with Temporal with, with this ship. Um, at least from the rumors that I've heard, one of the best combinations for torpedo stuff is Commander Command with Lieutenant Commander Temporal. Unfortunately, the ship only has Lieutenant Temporal instead of Lieutenant Commander Temporal, because so, so you don't get recursive sharing one, but there's still several other debuffing stuff at the Lieutenant rank for Temporal available to you for, for tanking purposes. So, especially because we don't have to use um, Photonic Officer for, for, for cooldowns for, for the Starship, um, there's a lot of extra options that you can do with this ship um, that you're not going to be able to see with a lot of other, other, other tanks. And it's still um, Commander Engineering Command, and you, you still have the ability to, to have more than three tactical abilities because you've got that other Lieutenant Commander U U Universal in the seating. So you still have flexibility there. Um, what does hurt the ship is that it is a standard cruiser. That is what hurts the ship more than anything else, but it's got very solid bridge officer seating. And that it's not the super ideal of Lieutenant Commander Temporal is what puts it down just ever so slightly below the Odyssey. I still think it's, it's, it's a great ship. If in that MUDS bundle with Kelvin ships, you, you, you got the Kelvin Connie, um, feel free to use it. The, sh the, sh the ship is also a great platform too. And still, with all the other stuff, it's going to be a decent to real torpedo platform as well. Right alongside that would be the Legendary Vorcha for me. Um, I still think it's it's a tier. Again, like like a lot of the other torpedo platforms here, it can be interchangeable with a lot of the other the other ones here. Um, what hurts this ship for me is that again, you don't have hangar pets available at all. So it's just pretty much a torpedo platform. You can do tanking, but it's gonna be much weaker um, than the other ones. But at least you have a little bit higher maneuverability, and because of it being a battle cruiser, at least you've got that crit severity in your mastery package. To give you a little bit of, of an extra umph when it comes to, to, to torpedo damage. Um, and again, because it's a legendary ship and a lot of legendary clan ships are battle cloaks, this one also has a battle cloak. It is unfortunate that this ship had to come from the 11th anniversary le legendary bundle, which <sighs> was way more of a cash grab than the 10th anniversary one, which was a very big disappointment for a lot of us. Um, but it is a solid ship. So, and it's got the same special seating as the Voth Rampart. The difference is that it's got Ensign Science instead of Lieutenant Commander Science. So, then finding what you're doing, it might actually be a better bridge officer for its torpedo stuff than what the Rampart is. But again, that depends upon what, what, what you specifically want to do with your torpedo boat and what you want to have happen there as to whether which one's going to be technically the better, more ideal option. If it doesn't matter to you, well, the ship's got an extra tactical console alongside that crit severity in the mastery package, so it, it, it can be better for you too. And hey, this is, a, this is a Klingon ship, so that's nice. And we also have the TOS D7. Come on, did you really think I wasn't going to put this ship up, up, up here? Now, it is true, I don't talk about this ship a lot. Um, the way that I see this ship is that it's basically the promo in inquiry that replaced Commander Miric Worker with Commander Temporal. Um, Commander Temporal is still a very, very strong primary specialization. Um, Recursive Shearing 3 is very strong. That's not to be understated. Um, that is a very, very strong specialization. It's got a very, very strong commander ability. And so you put that on, on a battle cruiser chassis, you give it a battle cloak, you give it a starship with reasonable durability and reasonable maneuverability, and it intelligence seating for extra um for your energy weapons, it's going to perform well. Um, I, I do think it is a step down from the promo inquiry, but I do think it is in that same realm of competitiveness. Um, it's not a starship that you really see too much because, I mean, I mean, if I was going to, if I was choosing between the promo D7s, and I did, 
I chose the, the Discovery D7 because it's got two hangar bays. And so I can slot suppression barrage frigates there. So for me, I'm going to choose the Discovery D7 over this one. But, you know, when, when the Legendary D7 came around, I, I definitely did buy that bundle too because I do like nostalgia. I just like power a little bit more than, than nostalgia. Um, this ship is is great. Um, and hey, if you're going for, for nostalgia and you're, and, you're, and you're a KDF captain, this is a good choice too. Um, that is what I'm saying. Still a great choice. Um, it is a bit of a step down, but I, but I still put, put it here. And to further round out A tier, this is where I would put the Fleet Merc Workabout work Cruisers. Yeah, I'm putting fleet ships in A tier of, of, of cruisers. I, I'm not sure if that's going to be a shocker to some of you, but these ships are strong. And yeah, the promo inquiry does add Lieutenant Commander um, Intel. But the functional thing of having, having a 5-3 weapon layout with Miracle Worker on a battle cruiser is still a very, very strong, potent DPS option. It just is. Um, and it frankly deserves to be here. Um, now, it is noticeably weaker than the promo inquiry. Um, it's got less maneuverability. It's got less durability. And it's much less flexible in its, in its bridge officer scene for sure. Um, and no and no secondary specialization that's actually different from it from the primary, but but that's what you expect from fleet ships. You expect it if it's gonna have two seats, it's gonna be the same seat. Or, or same type of seat anyway. That's why you've got two Merc work worker seats on the ship. Still, very, very strong starships, frankly. Um, and they definitely more than pull their own weight for for their access level in the fleet, tier three militaries, where you need to get these ships, uh, which I think is still completely reasonable. Um, a little bit higher than just any active fleet, but um, you know it's not super insane like like, like a tier four or, or, or tier five starship. Um, they're great. They they perform well. Um, it's the mastery package itself, um, alongside its its raw maneuverability that holds the ship the ship a little bit back versus what what you see from some of the ships above it. And it doesn't have hangar bays to back it up. It's just the raw weapon damage from these ships. So yeah, if you're looking for a fleet ship for cruisers, the Merrick Worker Battle Cruisers are, a, are an excellent option to choose. All right. With that said, let's get on to B tier. And B tier is going to start with a starship that I also typically don't talk about too much, but I do still need to briefly mention it. And it's the Geminar Light Battle Cruiser. And it's for one reason. It has Commander Universal Seating. And it has five forward weapons. If you are insistent on having Cannon Scatter Volley 3 on a cruiser chassis, this is your one starship that you can do that. There are a couple of other cruisers that have Commander Universal as well. But those cruisers do not have four forward weapons. So if, if, you, if you're wanting that, this is your starship. Now, with that said, is this a significant step down from other escorts that I showed in the escort tier list video that have, that have, that have Commander Tactical and Commander and Engineering? Yeah, this is a very significant step down from those because those ships have much better mastery packages. And you know that they still have reasonable durability alongside it. So it is going to be a step down, but I, I still think it's important to note that this type of ship does exist in Star Trek Online. If the ship did have a primary specialization, and it was actually a good one besides Intel, I would probably rate it, rate it much higher. But with it only having Lucent Commander Intel and nothing else, and for it being a cruiser, I think it has to stay in, in B tier. Right after that, well, this is where I, I, I would put the Sea Store Chronos. Um, now, when it comes to tanking, I do need, need to mention this. The meta right now is Commander Engineering. Okay. And yes, I technically had another tank earlier in this video that I rated super highly that I was like, this is a, this, the, this, the um, Discovery Constitution, Discovery D7. I was like, like, yeah, these ships are great for tanking. 
Well, it's, it's, it's because it had two hangar bays, and this ship does not. However, because of its unique consoles, the best taunt the best, best, um, console in the game, the Crown Tech and Capacitor, alongside a budget haste console that's almost, that is in the same realm, a little bit weaker, but in the same rough realm of haste as like the Domino console, but they're just on these 31st century starships. The fact that you have those available to this ship, in my opinion, does boost this up pretty high. Commander Temporal is still meaningful. Um, you still can do um, Recursive Sharing 3 with this thing and do Beam Overload and do okay on the ship. But where this thing excels is in tanking. Um, and so that's that's why the ship, in my opinion, needs to be here this high. Um, it's got reasonable durability. And for a Dreadnought Cruiser, it's actually got decent durability as well. Um, the reason why you don't see this as much, frankly, is because of looks. Um, now, this is an old picture. I had to snap this from a different video because my original picture of this is gone now. Sad. Because my laptop died a little while ago. But, um, like, you can make this ship look good, but the normal looks of this ship does not look good. Um, it generally does not look very appealing, which is sad. Um, but, hey, you know what? For good performing ships, a lot of the best ones aren't always going to look the best. Um, and that's that's the case with this thing. With there there is a different cruiser later that you can make look a little bit bit, bit better. That that performs similarly but noticeably worse than the ship. Cool. Okie dokie. Um, moving on. Um, I know this is going to be controversial, but we have the next two dreadnought cruisers right here, and I have the Galaxy X and the Vengeance right next to each other. And I know this is controversial that I'm putting the Galaxy X above the Vengeance. So you're going to hear this a couple of times in, in this video. When I think two starships are so close that it's too close to call, I will generally put the starship that I view as the cheaper starship higher in the ranking than the other starship. And so between a legendary starship and a low-buy starship, because one's account unlock and one's not, I have to go with the account unlock one, the default account unlock one, as the higher rated starship. Yes, in the raw, in, in a raw um, energy weapons battle, the Vengeance is the clear winner. That being said, even though the Vengeance has really, really solid hangar, hangar pets, a lot of the new squadron pets are in, in a similar realm. Not as good, but in a similar realm as what the hangar pets from the Vengeance can actually do. And so the hangar pets from this thing aren't as like noteworthy as they used to be whenever the ship initially came out. When the ship initially came out, yeah, it was it was the king. It was it was insane. It's not as OP as, as it used to be. When you also factor in that the legendary Galaxy X has has that commander intel plus Lieutenant Commander Command for Concentrate Firepower 3, this ship can be a solid torpedo boat alongside that other stuff. Yes, its maneuverability is crap. Its maneuverability really, really, really sucks. It has less than a six turn. And you don't have mobility as one of your cruiser commands, so you are going to feel the maneuverability loss on, on this ship. You are. There's no, no doubt about it. You're going to feel it. But if you can work around that, I do think that there are more options for this ship than what the Vengeance has. Now, the option that the Vengeance has is better. But because of those, those added options, I do have to put the Galaxy X above. Now, with that said, if the Vengeance had Lieutenant Commander Temporal instead of Lieutenant Temporal Seating, I would have put the Vengeance above the Galaxy X. Without Lieutenant Commander Temporal, this ship can't do... Um, can't do recursive sharing one. Um, it's just not available at lieutenant rank. It's only available at, at lieutenant commander rank or commander rank. So I can't do that with this starship. Um, and so you have to do more creative things with that lieutenant temporal seat than that, um, which is more for tanking, which the Galaxy X is going to excel a little bit better at than this ship, frankly. Because command is just the better specialization for tanking than temporal. Just the way it is in, in this game right now. Yes, this Vengeance has, has a 
passive cloak that the Galaxy X does not because the Galaxy X has a console set that gives you the cloak and a potential battle cloak if you sacrifice three slots for it, frankly. Um, and that's why it's a Commander Intel ship without a passive cloak because it's got the console set for that. I still think the Galaxy X overall, because of that pricing aspect, it's got to be higher. Um, yes, feel free to have... Feel free to comment in the description why I am dead wrong about that. Or in the comments. I'd, I'd be happy to hear it. Um, maybe there's something I'm overlooking, but I think I'm, I think I'm on, on the rough right track here. That they're very, very comparable. So comparable that it's, it's down to price. So for me, the Galaxy X has to go above. The Vengeance does look awesome, and you can make many insane screenshots with, 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 with the Vengeance. So they also did a visual update to the Vengeance relatively recently. Because it's, it is like there it is like Cryptic's most popular low buy starship. I'm honestly half surprised they haven't made like a Vengeance 2.0 in, in the low buy store. Hi Cryptic, if you're watching, it wouldn't be that hard to release the Vengeance 2.0. Like like seriously, it wouldn't be that difficult. Like just get like a like like, like some concepts like behind the scenes of like a different design for the Vengeance and just make another one. Or just make a second one that's actually bigger than the prior one. It's like, hey guys, you know that when we mess up the size of the old Vengeance? Well, here's a new Vengeance that's actually that bigger size. Here you go, player base. Have fun with, with, with the bigger Vengeance. You know, it, it wouldn't be too hard for Cryptic to do that, seriously. They, it, it would sell. It, I'm just saying Cryptic, it would sell. After that, um, this is where I will put the Enterprise J and the Enterprise J's variants. Um, and this is where we get our first um, engineering warbird. Now, as a note here, I normally hate warbirds, but this ship is not a battle cruiser. It is a flight deck carrier. Now, what I'm gonna note here even though technically it's not called a flight day carrier here, I actually looked at, I was looking at the stats. I was looking at the mastery packages. On a one for one thing, these ships 100% match now in terms of, in terms of this mastery package, what you see in flight day carriers. It's big difference is down to the cruiser commands. Instead of, instead of shields and um, command track fire, these ships have weapons and engines. So for so for rod damage or for torpedo stuff, they actually have better cruiser commands than what you would have for normal flight deck carriers. And that is why, in my opinion, these ships are allowed to stay as promo ships, even though they're old. They're really, really big. They're really, really bulky because of that stuff here. But hey, just use the engine cruiser command and hey, you got you you have a turn rate of eight now instead of five. That's meaningful. It goes from a bad turn rate to to a decent turn rate. And so like it's not like you 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 can make these ships fly okay. Not great, because the ships still are, are what they are and they're really big and bulky. Um but you can still make them fly okay. Now, in terms of base stats here, obviously the Klingon one's always going to be the, whenever we have these things, normally the Klingon one is just the best one when it comes to stats, and this is no exception. Um, as for the Klingon one, you've got um, basically all the stuff the Federation one has, and you're losing a smidget of shields to get, to get a cloak. Which I would say overall is it's an improvement. If you don't care about the cloak, then the Enterprise J is the way to go. If for some reason you really want a battle cloak, and lower power levels to have even worse speed than the other these other ships, and think that battle cloak is worth it to lose your cruiser commands, then you can go with with the Romulan version. But I would only recommend it if you're wanting the looks. If you really really like the looks, and actually to be honest, between the three versions, I think the Romulan one looks the best of the three. But it is they're all really they're really really awkward to fly. That's what that's just what I'm saying. Um, nonetheless, these are ships with two hangar bays. Um, for the torpedo meta of having a four forward weapon layout, these ships actually serve that right now, which is interesting. Um, now, 
what the one big thing that hurts this ship and why the TOS Connie has to be in A and this is in B is because you can't have concentrated firepower three and high yield three on these platforms. They've got so many things going for them, but you can't do the tried and true combination for torque boats of contrary firepower three plus high yield three. You can only do high yield two with these things. They're still good. They still have a lot of great fun things to add with what they're doing. Um, but if I was doing a true ranking, like you would be flying this to be a torque boat, not for a tanking platform. You, you can still tank with these, but there's a lot of ships that are noticeably better for tanking than these. Um, especially with the cruiser commands, it's meant to not really be a tank. It's meant to be the, be the, the other stuff. No, yes. Now, I, I've mentioned this in other videos before. With this particular bridge officer saying, you can make these ships like the most defensively oriented ships, like with like six hole heels. You can, you, you can do that with these ships, you know, like if you don't care about damage at all. But that's not really ideal. Um, you're probably going to make this a torp boat. And the promo TOS Connie is just going to serve you better than what these ships can actually do. You still get two hangar baits. And you have really, really high base stats besides mobility. So if you're willing to work around that and would prefer a 4 4 weapon layout with Temporal and, and Command, I think these are okay. On the other hand, our next starship gets the worst of both worlds. So this is the Promo Kirk. This is a ship that I kind of bashed in a, well, I, I, I didn't even put a Star Trek comparisons because I had a dead computer at the, at the time, I think. Was then or like around that time? Last little bit's been a little bit of a blur, but um, yeah, the Kirk is not a, an impressive starship. Um, it basically decided to lose the best part of the Enterprise J. Um, while still keeping the worst parts of the Enterprise J and, and giving yourself a 5-3 weapon layout. So sure, you can do, do dual cans with this thing. Um, but if I'm going to do dual cannons, there's, I mean, you've got the fleet temporal warships if you really wanted to do a 5-3 weapon layout with Commander Temporal. It's not that hard to get that ship <laughs> so um now sure this is this is a 30 second century starship so it's a federation ship with a built-in battle cloak cool what else are you giving me here well okay i'm gonna do all this but i'm gonna get rid of i'm gonna make it a more mobile starship so i'm gonna replace these shields and i'm gonna give it more mobility okay are you gonna solve the actual issue of you no know, no contrary free five power three plus high yield three. No, we're not going to do that. Okay. Well, then this is still worse than the COS Connie. Like, if they really wanted to fix this, sh fix this ship and make it competitive to the COS Connie, all they had to do, all Cryptic had to do, was flip the Lieutenant Tactical seat and Lieutenant Commander Science seat. Make it Lieutenant Science, Lieutenant Commander Tactical, and then Ensign U U U Universal from there. That's all the cryptic had to had to really do. Instead, they put it this way. And it's kind of meh. Um I mean it's it's okay. Its size is like the vengeance, but it's it's a promo pack and it's uglier. Um okay, ugly is is subjective. So it's um what's a good uh synonym for that? Um There's less visual, um, there, there, um, less of, of the visual parts like um, come together as, as you look at different viewpoints of the ship. Um, to the point that you can have several different angles of the ship and wonder if it's actually the same ship. Because from, from the top, from the bottom, from, from the back, it fundamentally lo looks, looks like, a, like a different ship. And not in a good way. Um, but yeah, for, 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 for actually raw stat points, it's just the Enterprise J, but you took off the hangar base, you gave it a 5 3 weapon layout, so that's actually a little bit worse for torpedoes, but not by much, but it's still worse. Um, but you still kept temporal command. 
So you just keep on saying like, yeah, we are the 32nd century TOS Connie. That's not even as good as the old promo TOS Connie. I mean, I guess maybe crypto was like, hey, we want to make sure that the promo TOS Connie is still the best one. We want to make sure people still buy it, but we want to make a very similar ship to that. So what can you do to make a new ship that gives homage to it without fully replacing it? Oh, let's just do it this way. I guess if you want a TOS Connie with a built-in battle cloak and are willing to sacrifice that, I guess this is your option. Um, but yeah, I, I think the other ones are just going to be, be, be a bit better for you. After that is probably a surprise for many of you. I've put the legendary discovery constitution here. And I am not joking. I do think it, it's, it's a solid B tier starship. Now this, this comes from much more of the flexible and lots of different things. Um, so first off, this is, this is a solid starship. It's Commander Temporal. So you can have a Christian Sharing 3 with this thing. So that's great. Um, it has very solid base stats. Now, it has reasonable maneuverability, especially for a flight deck carrier. It has very reasonable maneuverability, especially considering what, what's, what's going on here for it being a legendary starship. It still has a 5-3 weapon layout, which that layout didn't survive from going promo TOS Connie to the legendary TOS Connie. So... The fact that the legendary discovery constitution still got to keep its 5-4 weapons was very surprising to say the least. It got to keep its durability, which was surprising to say the least. Um, and they just made, made it pretty much just temporal instead of Merc Worker plus command for its seating versus the legendary version. Um, and because it doesn't have a commander Merc Worker, it has one less overall tactical console potential versus the other ship. That being said, the way that they changed the bridge officer seating If I, if theoretically in the future, if Cryptic ever decided to give us a starship trait that let us put a secondary deflector on any starship in the game, this would probably be one of the, of the best starships to use it. This is the best science cruiser for off meta stuff in, in the game right now. You're able to have six science abilities on, on this ship. You've got Commander Temporal, so you can make the entire engineering seat here temporal stuff instead of engineering. Then you have an Ensign seat for Immersed Power 2 Auxiliary. Your only dead seat is this Lieutenant Tactical seat, which isn't the worst thing in the world. And, I mean, like, if, if we're talking about actually other ships to potentially compete with, with, with a full science um, seating, you, you typically have to go to the full universal um, raiders, the tactical raiders. And so if you look, look at those from the sea store, we, we would see the Oberos, which is a, which is a 4 2 open layout, but because it's, it's, full, it's full universal seating, it only has 12 bridge offer seats instead of the normal 13. And that ship is also a commander temporal ship. And so you've still got commander temporal, but now you're down one, one bridge offer ability. And so for this ship, you're basically getting most of the best of what you would have gotten from like the Sea Store or Orbros. But you're down one bridge officer ability technically because you have two that are kind of worthless here. But you also have two hangar bays alongside molecular reconstruction. So for me, if you're going off meta for exotic damage and had to choose a starship that didn't have a secondary deflector, I think this is the best option in the entire game. Now, add to that, there is this fun little quirk whenever um, the Promo D7 and the Promo TOS Connie, or, or, or the Promo Discovery D7 and Promo um, Discovery Constitution came out. Um, and then a little bit later, you know, with like leveling and stuff. One of the biggest complaints and the issues that Cryptic was, was realizing was there's people that were wanting to level with the ship. And, but whenever you level with the ship, you didn't get all of the proper amount of weapons with it. And so one of their quick fixes was, well, let's just equip all those weapons on the ship. Even though technically from the scaling perspective of tier six scaling, it shouldn't have all those weapons equipped. There was, eh, let's just do this quick fix. Let's have it, have it equipped. That transferred over to the legendary discovery constitution as well. So what that means 
is that we have an account unlock ship that has two hangar bays and it's allowed as long as you don't mess with it with its weapons to have six beams and a torpedo available to it right after the tutorial which means not only is this the most sciencey cruiser this is the best starship for leveling in general you want to level a, a new character and, and, and intend to do exotic stuff with it you can still use this ship it's got science and temporal stuff so yeah, you can, you can play with science stuff while you're leveling, while the secondary deflector doesn't matter. Then once you get to level 65, you switch to a science vessel. And in the early levels, when you don't have that many abilities, your two hangar bays of hangar pets that aren't great, but at low levels, they're actually fantastic, can help carry you quickly through, through the missions. Are there some starships that are somewhat similar? Yeah, there is a recent Legend of Miranda that does some similar things that this ship can do. The ship just happens to do those things better. Especially at the leveling aspect and for the science aspect. And it's still solid at doing direct and energy weapon damage. This is a surprisingly powerful, surprisingly versatile platform. And with two hangar bays, guess what? You can use the suppression barrage frigates once again with this starship. So guess what? You can technically tank with this. It's going to be noticeably weaker than the Sea Store um, Kronos because you don't have, you know, you don't have, um, you don't have command seating. You don't have the, the taunt console that that ship would have. But hey, you at least still have some debuffing from your hangar pets. And so it's still going to be an okay ship. Um, so when you factor all that in, the ship has to be here. Um, now, if the ship had access to also Lieutenant Commander um, Command, um, it would have probably been an A tier starship. Like if the um, the legendary ambassador came out as it was, it would have been around the other ships. But if you put that on a flight deck here, it would have been way higher. This the, this ship is awesome. Uh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It is an awesome ship. If you're curious ever about what ship you should be picking for leveling, and you happen to have the 10th anniversary legendary bundle. I 100% would say every time, pick this ship. If you've already bought the bundle, just fly this ship at, at their early early levels. Um, it, it makes the game completely trivial until like level like until basically whenever you're about to switch to whatever your main ship is actually going to be. Because um, like because yeah, the hangar pets and everything else just carry you, and its base stats are just ridiculous anyway. So it it just carries you through most of of, of the game just fine. So yeah, that's this ship, um, Legendary Discovery Constitution, very much deserving to be a good starship. Um, it's not going to be one of the ones you pick for super high-end stuff, um, but it's, it's a very reasonable, very respectable starship none, none, nonetheless. That being said, um, at the high end, even, um, people will still pick the Fleet Malachowski. This ship is pretty much the Legendary Odyssey but it just doesn't have access to the flagship set. Now, because realistically, both those ships um, will want to use its secondary Lieutenant Commander seat for tactical and the Lieutenant seat, generally speaking, for tactical as well, you, you will build them from its bridge office team perspective basically the same. Now, Legendary Odyssey obviously has an extra tactical console and it has access, and the Legendary Odyssey has access to the flagship set that this ship does not. But other than that, they perform very, very similarly frankly. Um, now, this ship does notice we not have command track fire. So if, if you're relying upon that for tanking, this is not going to be necessarily the best ideal platform from that. But um, if you can work around that, I do think this is the best tank available right now from the fleet. It also happens to be one of the best torpedo platforms available from the fleet as well. I'm saying that as a caveat because I don't know if the fleet, if the fleet ground with Siege Destroyer is better than the ship. Um, because the Fleet Garamba has two extra tactical consoles and it has an insane mastery package for its starship. While this ship is just a multi-mission cruiser, which means it still has the horrible cruiser mastery package just with an extra hangar bay. Um, but still, it still has good, like for a cruiser at least, it's got good maneuverability, um, reasonable durability as well for that maneuverability. So um, you do have all, all that going for you. And overall, it just makes this a great ship.
But I do definitely get not everyone likes the aesthetics to necessarily of the ship, but keep in mind, the Fleet Mod Chassis can kit bash with all of the Reliant and, and Miranda skins. So you can basically tank with a Miranda and do, and do really well. If you've noticed, by the way, the Legendary Miranda is lower in the tier list than this one. Um, but yes, um, this, is, this, is, this is a great ship. Um, Commander Command, super awesome for both tanking, for, for torpedo stuff. They both have um, insane command abilities that you can use instead of a reverse shield player 3 Of course, tanks can still do reverse shield player 3 if, if you wish, just that right now, because of how much command abilities have been buffed, suppression barrage 3 is just the more effective way to go. And then call them mercy Ar artillery 3 if, if you aren't doing um, tanking stuff and just you to do that with concentrate five power 3 instead. Great starship. Um, and this is strangely enough available from tier two military. So really, really, um, easy to access. This is why, um, one of these days when I eventually get my, um, one of my last tanking videos out, um, with cookie cutter tanking, um, the two ships I'm going to use for that video is this ship and the, and the older fleet Miranda. Um, advanced light cruiser because both those ships are available from tier two military. So basically anyone who with, with any sort of active fleet at all will have access to both the ships and both ships are very good for different types of tanking. So I'll, I'll be using this ship and then that other Miranda for that cookie cutter tanking video, just because if we have to use a fleet starship, let's use ones that are good and usable and, and accessible to everyone pretty much, or everyone that's a part of any, some, any sort of active fleet. Anyway, this is an insanely good ship, um, a starship that I can highly recommend for you all. Close, but not necessarily as close, is this next ship, and it's the Lobi Undine Biocruiser. And um, this is one of those ships that um, it's definitely got the feelings of the TOS Connie because it's got it's got commander engineering with, with triple lieutenant commander. Um, what hurts it? is that it's Lieutenant Commander Specialist Seat sucks because it's pilot. And as I've said before on, on the channel, if it's not Commander Pilot for pilot maneuvers, I don't particularly care for the Specialist Seat and almost pretend that the Specialist Seat doesn't exist. So for a, for a solo Commander Command Seat, um, I'm not a big fan of this. Now true, this, does sh this ship can do, you know, it does have commander command seating with the ability to alongside it have concentrate five power three so five power three and um high high yield three so the ship can do that just like the tos connie so if if you're just wanting that you can go to the low by store to get it if you really are intent on having commander plus triple lieutenant commander that being said you've got the fleet malachowski that can do the same thing so, um, yes, in some ways, this can be in some specific builds a little bit weaker than this ship, but I'd say for a lot of builds, they're very comparable. And so I have to put the more expensive starship again below the cheaper option. So for me, we have similar in power, but it's at least same realm of power anyway, but it's just more expensive. And so that that's why when this ship came out, you know, We've got a not necessarily appealing starship with a not necessarily the most powerful bridge officer scene coming out. Yeah, it makes sense why people aren't flying it. Not pretty and not super impressive either. Super makes sense. Behind them are starships that I have lauded on this channel for a while. And these are the fleet flight deck assault carriers. Now, Prior to realizing that the fleet Garamba Seas Destroyer existed, and prior to the fleet Malachowski coming out, I often said that, the, that these were, were the best tanks in the game. And I still think that they are very solid tanks in, in, in the game. Now, if, if you look at, the, at these base holes, these base holes are kind of ridiculous when you, when you, when you, when you consider it, it, its maneuverability. Like We're talking about maneuverability like at or better than the Miracle Worker on flight, on flight deck carriers here. And this is from the fleet with, with, with these whole ratios. Now, yes, 
the Romney one is a little bit lower. It's got 0 0.055 less whole for the whole ratio than the other, the other variants. And it's because the Romney version has, has a battle cloak. And this is yet another reason why I don't like engineering warbirds. Because I know that Cryptic can give us a Romulan battle cloak on a Romulan faction starship and not have to give us sing singularity core stuff. Because the ship doesn't have a singularity core, it's allowed to have cruiser commands. <sighs> so yeah, when, when it comes to pure Romulan starships, like like whenever I'm asked, like, hey, Cariolo, what's what's the what's the best Romulan faction starship that's to tank in? It's either between the Scimitars or the Suvon Silic. Those are the two that I basically immediately go to. It's like, do you want cruisers? Suvon Silic. If I have to, I've had to choose a warbird, I, I will choose a Scimitar. Legendary Scimitar or the Engineering Scimitar is, 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 is what I'll pick. But yeah, um, with these ships, they are basically carbon copies in basically every way besides the looks, and that Suvon Silic has, has, has a battle cloak for the small cost of 0 0.055 hull ratio. It's really just 0 0.05 hull ratio for the sea star version, but you know, because fleet versions are have 10% higher hull and shields, that is, you know, increased onto its fleet version as well, because 10% more of 0.5 and added on is, is 0 0.005. So yeah, it's it has 0 0.055 less hull than than the other two variants. So yeah, the Telai Prelim and Orion Blackguard are legitimately the exact same ship. They just have a they just have, they just have a different skin that that they use. And so yeah, um, when it comes to the modern flight deck carriers for the actual Alliance factions, these are the closest that we technically have. That being said, all three of these ships are kind of like sub factions of the main faction. Um, it would be nice if we got an actual modern flight deck carrier because um, all of them are either like these or they're like alien starships or they're like the discovery constitutions that are like from the past, not from present STO. I hope at some point Cryptic releases modern STO starships. I think the, I, I, I think a legendary Bortosk would, 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 be, would be excellent in that regard, by the way. In case Cryptic is listening, I think the legendary Bortosk would be excellent in that regard. And I think it would sell well if you did a 4-4 Miracle Worker um, flight to carry of, of the Rotas or, or did a 5-3 or if I joined a cruiser of that and had like com and had double command receiving. I think it, it would still work either, either way. But anyway, um, with these flight deck soul carriers, um, really their downside for modern STO is that, well, you've got that commander engineering seat that that's bare. So the initial thought is, well, let's let's tank with this. Well, Virtual Priority Three isn't as good as um, Suppression Barrage Three, so that's a, that's a big a bit a bit of a knock against them. But still, um, the bridge officer is fine. Um, and actually, if you look at look at the raw bridge officer and ignore the specializations, this is the exact same bridge officer seating of what you see on the Miracle Worker um, battle cruisers. Just Miracle Worker battle cruisers have Commander Engineering Miracle Worker and Lieutenant Tactical Miracle Worker versus these ships that have Lieutenant Commander Tactical Command and nothing else. Um, but because these ships are flight deck carriers, and especially because the, the Romulan version has a Romulan battle cloak, while still being allowed to have cruiser commands, for me, for me being biased against warbirds, if I can't put push the warbirds down, I'm at least going to push the one ship that's basically the one warbird that's actually done right inside this game up. So maybe in terms of its weight, these ships are a little bit too high on the list, to be honest. I do have my own biases of ships that I've loved to play for years. These, these are starships that I've loved for a long, long, long time. Um, I know because of their looks, they'll never get a legendary version, so this is all we're going to get with these ships. Um, but I do think they're very solid. And if, if you're going to the fleet and... You're wanting something that's not the Miracle Worker um, battle cruisers, and, and want to tank and don't like the Malachowski for some reason. I think these these are great alternatives to that. They are going to be also weaker than those, but I think the, they are still great starships nonetheless. Cool. 
Okie dokie. Moving on, we have the, the legendary Walker. Yeah, I um, bashed this star show quite a bit whenever it came out. But, especially in context of the, of the legendary Vorcha, um, it's still an okay ship. Now, what hurts this ship a bit for the torpedo meta is that you've got that triple lieutenant seating, so you have more engineering seating than what you're really wanting for this ship. Additionally, what hurts the ship as well is that it's it's Lieutenant Specialist Seat is Lieutenant Pilot, which isn't necessarily the greatest of specializations to have for a cruiser. So that does suck. That being said, this is a legendary starship that is available as, as a single purchase, which means, oh, and it also has fetters for looks instead of Klingon. So if you see legendary bundles on sale and want legendary version but aren't wanting to spend the money for the 11th anniversary bundle, this is technically a slightly cheaper not cheap but slightly cheaper replacement for it that is noticeably weaker but it's still a a replacement for the legendary Vorcha. that's why legendary Vorcha is an a tier and this is in definitive b tier um still reasonably maneuverable still reasonably durable it's got four tactical consoles commander command still works really well for um for, for torpedo stuff but um but yeah um that extra lieutenant in engineering does hurt it quite a bit now, it, it, it'll still work just fine for tanking. You don't have to have command track fire, but it, it still is fine. Um, and so yeah, for me, this ship still works. Um, it, it just is a little bit weaker. All right. <laughs> After that, we have the frigates. And for me, in this tier list, this is where the three frigates fall in this order. Our two promo versions and then the, then the event version. Again, because of the raw nature of, of the frigate mastery package, they have the most offensive mastery package for cruisers in the game. Like other other like other, other cruisers in general, what holds them back is going to be the specialization seating. So whatever ones have to have the best specialization seating is what's going to be ranked higher. And again, as a reminder, um, I value commander stuff over lieutenant commander. And if I see if I see a pilot seat that's not commander, I ignore the seat. So what realistically what I see for, for these seatings is, is I see the pilot maneuvers plus lieutenant command versus lieutenant commander Merrick Worker versus Lieutenant Commander Intel. So based upon my personal judgments of how I would judge starships, when you have all that stuff plus a battle cloak on this promo frigate, I do have to rate this one the highest, followed by the Freedom Frigate because of the better special seating and additional tactical console. This is like one of two starships that has a base of five tactical consoles. Technically, whenever you include Miracle Worker ships, there's a couple of extra ones beyond that, but it's just this one and the tactical version of the Bratosk are like the only two cruisers in the game with actually five raw base tactical consoles. Um, although, yes, several ships, other ships can get six base with cruisers with Merc worker stuff um so yeah you've got that Merc worker versus lieutenant commander intel when you also combine its base stats here for the freedom i do consider it the, the second best ship but it's but it actually is reasonably close to to our our brooks forget from the 32nd century um yeah um they're all very solid um because they're frigates they're all maneuverable the Lachi one is, is at least durable because it's the oldest, but it also happens to have the highest shield ratio. So that's an interesting, weird thing with, with the ship too. But but again, when you're looking at the old averages, like you're averaging about what what the what what the books frigate is, but a little bit higher shields for the rough average of, of all these things. Um, all all the frigates are good. If you happen to have the old Alachi frigate, it's a it's a solid ship. It's not durable, but it, it's a very solid ship. So for me, I, I have to put the um, Brooks Frigate here. And then of course, the Freedom Frigate from, um, what is it, Star Trek Beyond, I think was, was the movie, when um, Kelvin Kirk um, destroyed his new um, a a Enterprise, and then he had the, yeah, I, I think it was Star Trek Beyond. Again, with, with Partial Merc Worker, this ship is a solid ship and it's got a high hole too um for all that maneuverability 
um, great ship. It's slightly subpar master package, does hold it back, but at least for cruiser master packages, it, it excels very well. Then the Lachi frigate, um, very solid ship as well, um, and it's low durability and slightly subpar Lieutenant Commander Intel seat is what holds it back versus the other ones. But I still think they're all in, in the same rough realm as well. All right. With that, um, we get to this guy. Which again, I pretty much just view as the battlecruiser variant of the Alachi Frigate. That instead of Raider flanking, it's got the Temporal Distress Beacon. Now, it's the Temporal Distress Beacon comes from the Not, not Cool Science vessel. So if you were going to fly this ship and wanted to fly it because of this console, you do need to buy a second Not Cool ship from the, from the Lobby store or find the other one from the exchange as well um, in, order, in order to get what I feel is the maximum benefits from this. Now, yes, like this is a clicky that you can use whenever. Um, it, it's, it's an immunity that, that can last for up to 30 seconds. And this immunity is immunity to all damage, not just to energy damage like, like what reverse shield polarity effectively does. This is immunity to all damage. And it gives you a passive of 12% crit severity, which still helps reasonably for your passive DPS for a, a tank or just rough survival in general. Now, it is true, you do need to be careful about where you put this because even if even, even though enemies aren't going to be targeting your duplicate, if enemies are doing chain types of, of, of effects or AOE types of effects, you got to make sure that you position yourself so that the duplicate isn't in that isn't accidentally in that AOE. Otherwise, the click key will be basically wasted because you're only immune while, while your time duplicate persists. It's basically how that um, the whole um, that, that whole arc works. Whenever you fight the fight the not cool, you have to take out the um, the time duplicates in order to be able to take out the main ship, or you have to wait for the duration of of, of basically this to go off, and then you can attack the duplicate and or type attack the main ship and and take it off from there. The ship is noticeably weaker than. The one you actually one that you actually actually fight in missions but it is still it's, it's basically just a smaller player variant of it um again just like the other not cool ships it doesn't have a primary specialization but it does get a battle cloak um so that is something that's nice i guess uh, it only has three ta uh, base tactical consoles um now the two piece um with, with this particular console set does give you extra plasma damage and um i believe it's a not cool raider that gives you a console that gives, gives you also um, flat plasma damage as well. I don't think, I, honestly, at this point, Star Trek Online things is better. Like, if you really are going to use anything but the Not Cool set, just use this console, frankly, off of the Not Cool Science Vessel and, and just call it good. Um, we've gotten so much damage inflation over time that, you know, even depending upon, like, what, what like, IC or HC, HC group that you're using, there, there can still be debates, even that, that for example, tank builds, you might not even use the fleet um, colony tackle consoles a anymore. Like it really just depends upon how quick enemies are dying as to how much survival you actually need in, in your build versus just, yeah, let, let's just have a couple of immunities go off, just blot, just do a couple of nukes and blast the way the enemies and just move on. Um, so upon your, your group will highly depend upon what type of build you need to put on for your build, which is why I'm going to have some different things with the, with the cookie, cookie cutter tanking builds um, whenever that video eventually comes out. Um, the, this console is that strong that even though this ship isn't necessarily the strongest of starships, the console itself, when used properly, does boost this ship he heavily in the, the, the tier list. Now, if Cryptic eventually unlocks this console for all starships, this will drop very very substantially in the tier list very very substantially but for now th this ship gets to remain here alongside uh, the not cool ship for me is the fleet sagittarius and this is the alternate that i was talking about when, when it came to the, to the to the chronos um now we're still in b tier obviously but we're talking about like a higher b tier versus a lower b tier starship and um like, even though it does have an, an ugly um, skin, um, it also has a TOS alternate to that, to that ugly skin. And the TOS looks actually look, looks good, which means if you're someone who's looking for a, a TOS tank, um, this is 
one of, if not one of your best options in the game for it, frankly. Like, maybe there's like the, the, the TOS Connie, there's the Legendary Connie um, as other options for you. Um, but I think this is a super, super solid option because you also have a unique console available from the C Store version. That's a pretty meaningful uh, survival cookie. Now, it doesn't last a long time, but it's still very, very impactful. It's a it's basically a team wide damage resistance aspect of, of the DP arm console. It's very potent, gives you that bonus damage resistance, and it gives you insane boost to incoming whole heals and shield heals. So even if, if this is just affecting yourself, what this can do is, is make your actual whole and shield heals go that much further for, for the next few seconds. So instead of needing to you know, use a couple of heals, maybe you can just use one or two. And you, and you, you, you can get the same amount of, of healing needed for, for your starship at that particular time. It is very impactful. Um, now, I, I don't think this is necessarily as strong as the Taunt Clicky console available to, to the Kronos ships, but this is still a meaningful console. Um, and you just need the C-Store version of the, the Sagittarius, which the C-Store version of Sagittarius Terrius does not give you the skin. You have to get the Dilithium version as well in order to get the TOS skin. Slightly weird on that, but Cryptic did what, what they did with the Agents of Yesterday really big bundle with that. It's slightly weird with that. The console's great. Um, the Starish is basically what you expect from like the, the, the Kronos. It's just that this is a cruiser variant of the Kronos instead of the Kronos, which, which is a Dreadnought cruiser. And Dreadnought cruisers have a slightly better mastery package. And Dreadnought cruisers have a, a, a hangar bay. This ship is just a standard cruiser. So it has all the cruiser commands, but it doesn't have access to dual cannons, which won't matter too much for tanking. But it is something to note. Its base stats are a little bit lower in everything. The Kronos is actually more maneuverable than the ship. Something to point out. Um, but I think it's still fine. You are down a console alongside all that, but I think the ship is very serviceable for, for, for a tanking perspective of, of what you might want to do with, with the ship. Basically a slightly weak, weaker tank that has much better space barbie appeal. For a lot of people, that is, that, that is a fine trade to make. Right alongside that, we have the legendary Miranda, a starship that I honestly, in many ways, consider um, equal to the Sagittarius. And again, whenever I in this list, as I've mentioned before, when starships have about the same, you know, rough power to me, I will rank ships based on what I consider is cheapest. And for me, a cheap, a, a, a fleet starship is a bit cheaper to me than the, than a legendary starship. So I'm putting the Legend Miranda a little bit below that one. Legend Miranda is still a great ship. Um, unfortunately, because its secondary seat is, is pilot for the purposes of, of this video, I am not considering it to have a secondary specialization, but it is still a good ship nonetheless. If I was gonna use the specialization, at least it's on, on the science seat instead of tactical, which is a bit of an improvement over some of the other recent legendary ships that Cryptic has been releasing recently. So that's great that they slightly learn from their lesson and we're willing to make new ships that were different than that um you're still stuck with three base tactical consoles which is not necessarily the greatest thing but hey um at, at the end of the day um the way that i see this ship um it's basically the legendary discovery constitution but it's but it's, it's made as a tos version and it's made as a multi-mission cruiser instead of a flight deck carrier which, I mean, it, it definitely makes sense. Um, there is no way that you could have made the Miranda into a flight deck carrier. Well, I guess you technically could have, but from its size perspective, it just didn't make sense. I mean, the legendary constitutions, even though they were bigger, it, it was still odd that they were made into flight deck carriers. But then again, in Star Trek Discovery, when they, when the Enterprise shot out all those hang, hanger pets, it also didn't visually make as much sense either. So, eh. Cryptic tries its best to be as logical as, as it can within its limitations. Um, this is one of those cases too. Um, the, the, the ship is still um, decently maneuverable, decently durable, um, and it's got its multi-mission cruiser stuff. So if, if you want to tank, you, you use the shield one. If you want to do energy damage, you use, use the weapon one. And it's got full temporal, so you can do like a reconstruction. Um, 
and all that fun jazz with that as well. Again, because it is a multi-mission cruiser, it still has the Lackluster Cruiser Mastery Package, which sucks, but it is what it is. All right, with that said, we are out of B tier now. And we are into C tier. Now, something to keep in mind as we get into C tier. Um, for the purposes of, of this video, um, for the funny part when I was making this list was that the average C tier starships ended up being the standard C store Miracle Worker cruisers. So basically, because we're about to get into some Miracle Worker cruisers pretty shortly. For me, for the purposes of this video, I'm, I'm considering those like middle of the road. So basically, all the, a lot of the A and B tier stuff had something to push them beyond what you could get from like a standard tactical Miracle Worker cruiser from the C store for 3000 Zen. So a lot of the stuff in C tier is going to be in that rough realm, or maybe if it's after those, a little bit weaker. And then once we get to D and E tier, it's going to be a lot of ships that are definitely going to be noticeably weaker than that. So as we go into these, just keep in mind, there is a lot of that to consider. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with C tier. And to kick off C tier is going to be one of the ships that I like a lot, which is the legendary TOS T7. Um, this is the promo inquiry, but Cryptic flipped the specialization CD. Now, when we talk about this, I'm going to be honest. Like flipping the flipping the special seating for these two specializations is a very very big downside. It's a very very big downgrade because Commander Intel doesn't really give you too much over Lieutenant Commander Intel, but Commander Mirror Worker would give you way more than what Lieutenant Commander Mirror Worker gives you. So flipping that is a significant downgrade. This is still a good ship. This is still a meaningfully good ship. And you still have decent maneuverability, and you've got a battle cloak on, on the ship as well. Um, I remember when the ship came out, people were like, why don't you just flip the special scene because that'll make it way better. It's like, well, if you flip the special scene, it would just be the inquiry with, with a battle cloak. And realistically, the inquiry is one of the better battle cruisers or cruisers, period, in the game. Cryptic isn't going to make a legendary ship an account on lock starship that like dwarfs the rest of their like lockbox and promo ships cryptic isn't going to do that or if they do they already have a plan in place to outdate that ship very shortly thereafter um that's the only way that they would ever do do something like that um because cryptic wants to make money and they make money through selling loot boxes well selling master keys and pro boxes that the people open um, that's how Cryptic makes their money right now. Um, with some minor things with C-Store stuff too. But it's mainly loot boxes where Cryptic makes their money right now. Um, that being said, you know, this is still a great ship. Four base half of consoles. You've got Miracle Worker seating. You've got Intel seating still. You've got reasonable flexibility. Um, you'll realistically make that other Lieutenant Commander C tactical as well. And then it's up to you as to what you want to make that instant seat. You want to make it engineering. You want to make it tactical. You can teach, You can basically choose whatever you want there. It's on the base chassis of a Val Cruiser, which besides frigates are about the best you're going to get with cruisers. You still get that crit severity in there. Um, and you have most of the cruiser commands available to you as well. So I, I like this ship. I think it does what it needs to do. Um, and for a legendary starship, I think it still does honor to the TOS-T7. It's not, it's not a crappy ship anyway. It's a good ship. It just doesn't excel like a lot of other ships in this list can. In, in the right circumstance. So for me, that makes it a C tier ship. Right below them are the legendary Merrick Worker Cruisers. Now, I'm putting these here because um, for me, um, these ships are very, very close in power to the C store Merrick Worker Cruisers, but what makes them better is that they have more, more mobility. Having more than a six turn rate does, does matter. And these ships have meaningfully more, more turn than that. Now, is there really that much of a difference between these three ships? No. Um, 
I think in my list, I technically put the Sovereign number one, Excelsior number two, and, and the Legendary Tio's County number three. Is there really that much difference between these three ships? No. Um, like, if you have access to all three of the ships, just pick the ship that you like. Um, there's going to be nuances between builds as to which one you're going to choose. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much. And yes, all, th all three of these can have at least five tactical abilities. Now, yes, the Excelsior can have, can have six and the Sovereign can have seven. And that's, in my Excel spreadsheet, that's actually what, what, what made the difference. It wasn't the whole ratios, it was that. But um, these ships are still solid. They're all standard cruisers that just have a smidge more maneuverability and still have reasonable durability to do what you would, would expect from American work, work, worker cruisers. And because of that, they can do it a little bit better than a lot of the, the other cruisers can. Um, still, you don't, don't get to have double lose lieutenant commander tactical, so there is still some advantages of the plain sea store American worker cruisers. Um, these ships, all three of them, super, super solid. Um, and with that second specialization, it's either American worker or pilot, so this second expression again doesn't really add too much to the build. You you can do stuff with it if if you wish, but you don't have to. Still solid solid ships that do what you expect in debatably a better looks too. Alongside them, we have some interesting ships here. I can move this for a moment. When we look at the Caesar Mega Bundle Command Battle Cruisers. We look at these ships. I have classified these ships in my Excel spreadsheet as multi-mission cruisers, and um, and they are, um, in 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 every meaningful way that we define stuff. Now, it's they they have different cruiser commands and their mass batteries is, is is a little different, but in meaning, that is how they really are. And you know, when these ships came out, people didn't know what these things were supposed to be, and I, and I totally get it. like. You, like until multi-major cruisers came out, I didn't know what these things were supposed to be. So I categorized these things as, as battle cruisers, you know? And then in the second one, I categorized them as dreadnought cruisers. I'm like, oh, I'll try to do hangar bay stuff. This time it's like, okay, they're clearly supposed to be multi-mission cruisers. It's just that that didn't exist at the time these things came out. They were trying to make something like a battle cruiser, but with a hangar bay. That's what that's that's what multi-mission cruisers are are today. These, these, um, the, the tactical variant of these battle cruisers have five tactical abilities. The non-tactical versions of the command battle cruisers do not have five tactical abilities. Which, by my definition of starships from earlier, if a starship cannot have five tactical abilities, or if a starship lacks a lieutenant or a tactical seat, it immediately goes to E tier, and the engineering. And science versions of these ships do, do not have five tactical abilities and do not have Lieutenant Commander tactical seating. They are four seat um, tactical seat starships that are like double lieutenant. So the non tactical version of these ships really suck. You, you, you can still make those work, but they, they definitely will struggle much, much more. Now, when we talk about the actual seating them, see themselves, I do consider these weaker than the Fleet Malachowski, but you have more than just the Fleet Malachowski. You have, you have other visual variants, and so I totally get it. Um, if you're wanting to tank, you know, if you're wanting to you know, do something like, like, like that and look, especially if you want to look Klingon doing it, I can definitely see the reason for using a tactical command battle cruiser. Also, even though I, I consider these multi-mission cruisers, they do have to have the battle cruiser ration package, and they do have that. Then they do have the flight deck carrier um, cruiser command package. Now, the reason why they initially did that was because back when these ships released, flight deck carriers were actually at that time called flight deck cruisers and only had one hangar bay. And they wanted these ships to be reminiscent of more maneuverable ships that weren't dreadnought um, cruisers. So, and the single hair, the single. Um, hangar option at the, at the time was flight deck cruisers. Um, but at that time as well, flight deck cruisers didn't have access to dual cannons, and so their their solution was, well, let's just make a flight deck cruiser that can use that can use dual cannons. So let, let's just call it a battle cruiser instead. 
And that's what, what, what they did. And that's why this, these ships are called command battle cruisers instead of, instead of flight deck cruisers. Because they wanted to make sure that these ships had access to dual cannons. But they also wanted to basically be a flight deck cruiser. And so because of that, when the flight deck cruiser, the flight deck carry changes happened, these ships did not get an extra hangar bay. And so for me, with everything else that's changed, it made sense to put these ships in, in the multi-mission cruiser sub, subclass. Because that's honestly where they fit. If Cryptic never gets there, then part of the Dreadnought cruiser subclass. But they were supposed to still have, have a hangar bay and access to, to dual cannons. Most mission cruisers fit that bill the best of all the subclasses right now. So it gets to be there. Um, and, and of the three variants, like if we, we recall back to, to the slide, I would 100% say the Klingon version is the best. You lose a tiny bit of hull to get meaningfully higher shields. Or sorry, sorry, sorry a little bit lower shields get meaningfully higher hull. My brain's going a little bit right now. Still reasonably maneuverable. Inertia sucks, but you know it's it's got eight turns, so it's not the end of the world. And again, the tactical version gets to be here. The engineering and science are going to be towards the very very bottom of E tier because of those insane struggles that that the other variants are going to have to deal with. Cool. Okie dokie. With that, uh, right after after them is where I would put the Sea Star Mega Bundle flagship battle cruisers. Um, now, yes, the, um, the Odysseys are better at tanking, um, but these ships have more offensive potential. So if you're okay not having to deal with command track fire, these ships are 100% the better option because they're basically, they basically have the Odyssey bridge officer seating, but they have higher hull, they have access to dual cannons, they have access to a cloak, um, and they all have, have at least one more tactical console over their Federation variant. The science version actually has um, two consoles more than its Federation variant, while still having access to sensor analysis, something really wonky and, and cool. Um, not really important, but if, if you're curious about it, the science version of the, the York Town has, uh, for the Klingon side, has two more tactile consoles than, than, than the, the York Town. In case y'all were wondering, fun facts for y'all, um, still has an enforced base tactical console. So, but yes, the tactical version of the the tier six Bort Bortas is one of the other cruisers in, in the game with five base tactical consoles. It's why I really, really, really want the legendary um, Bortas to have commander engineering slash miracle worker because that would be super cool. It'd be cool to have a non-escort starship have access to seven base, ta base tactical consoles. And again, would that really be a super big issue for, for STO if, if that was the case? No, because guess what? Cruisers have the worst mastery package. They have all these different things they're having to, to get over to compete with escorts, to compete with science vessels. Um, now with this picker ship in particular, you know, you have access to the flagship set, which is awesome. Um, but you don't have a primary specialization. But if you want to go to go slightly off meta and do, and do ox to bat, these ships can these ships can still work just fine for torpedo stuff. If you want to use um, reverse shield polarity three, these ships are totally fine to tank in as as well. You just have to deal with no um, command track fire. And unlike the Odysseys that have a six turn rate, these ships have a slightly higher turn rate. So that's definitely something nice as well for them in particular. The Odysseys, on the other, the other hand, have smidgen higher shields, smidgen lower hull, and, and lower turning. And their variants are much more drastic in the amount of tactical consoles that they have available to them. They are at least one con tactical console below the Klingon variant. The Science One is two tactical consoles below the Klingon variant. But the but this bridge I've seen is the exact same between the tactical engineering and science version of the, of the two different ships. It's just the, it's just the consoles that are actually different as well as the base hull and actual maneuverability of the ships themselves and the Starship subclass. Uh, it's also why I, I have typically said on the, on the channel that, um, that, that, that the flagship mega bundle was one of the best value mega bundles, which also makes sense why Cryptic has been cherry picking Starships out of that to make legendary ships so that that bundle gets much less value so that people stop complaining about ships to be really, really 
worthwhile in other bundles inside the game. But um, I mean, the ship itself is still fine. Um, if if you want the Federation aesthetic, or if you highly value command and track fire, these ships do have an edge over over the Klingon variant. When you consider all other play styles besides tanking, though, I do have to give the edge to the KDF variant. That that is, is the battle cruiser. There's just it's just the extra offensive potential of the extra one to two consoles combined with access to dual cannons and higher hull and higher maneuverability it, and a better master package because of the crits. It, it just means those ships just have to be higher in, in the list. If we were doing this just based upon tanking, I would probably give the edge to the Odyssey still. But because we're doing more than just tanking in this video, I do have to give the edge to, 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 to the to the old tier six Portas over the old tier six um, Odyssey Star Cruisers. I just have to say that. And then after after them, this is where our America worker, worker cruisers come, come in. Now, between the three variants here, we have a tactical, we have a science, and we have an engineering variant. Now, the tactical version has the most tactical consoles, um, the engineering and, and the science variant, um, only have three base with those with those two universal with tier six X. So, um, there's something to keep in mind. Um, also, you need to keep in mind um, the Klingon version has higher hull than the Federation version. The Roman version has the lowest of the, of the hull and shields, but it gets access to dual cannons. Um, when it comes from cruisers to battle cruisers for um, for conversions from last video to this video. I, I do consider these tactical miracle worker warbirds as battle cruisers for the purposes of my um, of my Excel spreadsheet, um, because in basically every other circumstance for tactical warbirds, or at least I'm sorry, the the engineering warbirds, um, in in general, um, there are, there was a lot of other ones that were very very similar to this particular this, these particular warbirds. That had similar to similar maneuverability and their equivalents were also battle cruisers. So that, that's for those of you that are wondering that 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 is why. Um, now, unlike um, some other bundles that we'll get to later, um, the Klingon and Federation version both are standard cruisers, which is interesting. Normally, when we talk about Federation cruisers to the, the Klingon cruisers, it's normally Klingon battle cruiser versus Federation cruiser. Because back in the super super old days, um, Klingons were the ones with battle cruisers, and Federation were the ones with just regular cruisers. It was the Arbiter slash Avenger that kind of like helped to, to change that, because enough Federation players were complaining that they wanted battle cruisers, because Klingons did, just like Federation wanted carriers, and so they got the Jupiter carrier, and we know how that turned out. Um, these ships from the sea store are actually fantastic. Um, basically, if you just want a standard of the mill broadsiding starship with miracle worker seating, you can't go wrong with these ships. Um, and, just, and it just depends upon your preferences of what type of bridge offer seating that you're wanting. You know, maybe you want the tactical variant with six tactical abilities and maximum number of tactical consoles. That's the way to go for you. Um, you want to go with the engine variant that's that's that you can go super super heavy ox to bat on. You're welcome to do that. You want to go with the science variant because you want gravity wall. You can definitely do that as well. Um, there's nothing I, I, against doing that. Just about whatever your play style is, everything works with those ships. Um, they're the low mo 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 mobility, um, and that they don't really stick out. Other than that, is basically why I consider these ships the general benchmark whenever we talk about cruisers inside of this game. Because, um, you know, if we're trying to go much higher, rather we're talking about a handful of fleet ships, and otherwise a lot of times it's like Sea Store or Exchange Star ships, and it's like, these ships are still reasonably cheap. They don't have fancy consoles that make them good. They're just the raw ships themselves, and they've been out for a very, very long time. And they still hold up really well. Um, they aren't flashy. But they, but they have good stats and they get the job done. So for me, these are the easy benchmark for starships inside the game. Is a starship better or worse than these ships? That depends upon what's going on with those ships.
which yes means that there, there are a lot of cruisers that are worse than these ships for sure there are a lot of cruisers that are worse than these ships uh, but but for me this is this is an easy relatively fair benchmark i thought it's way fair, fair to use these rather than the fleet mirror worker, worker battle cruisers because um if you notice in this tier list the mirror worker battle cruisers were an eight were an a tier um i'm not gonna do that to the whole list because otherwise that'd be like this starship sucks and this starship sucks and this starship sucks and this starship sucks this is at least a bit more fair and to give more of the cruisers in this list a fighting chance now some here's a unique starship that i don't talk about too much but i think it's actually decent and it's the fleet Veral. now if you actually want this if you actually want the Veral look you have to go to the sea store and actually buy the ship this is one of the weird circumstances where um if you buy the fleet for all from the fleet you actually can't use the for all skin you have to go and get the sea store skin later or yeah you have to have the sea store one it, it's 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 odd um but it, but its base stats are actually good um and it's commander temporal and it's very flexible on its team unlike, unlike other ships in this list there's nothing super spectacular it doesn't have five four weapons but it doesn't have it have any force science seating and this is not something that you typically find when it comes to, to fleet stuff especially uh, very high, high highly flexible and highly maneuverable so for me very very solid ship now on on its curtails is is the fleet paladin which i personally feel is just the fleet overall but worse triple lieutenant versus double lieutenant commander lieutenant ensign Basically, same durability. Believe Raw is way more maneuverable, and it's got a cloak. The Paladin doesn't. Other than that, they're extremely similar. Um, maybe that second Lieutenant Temporal matters to you, but to me, I'd rather have double Lieutenant Commander, frankly. Um, I, I think that, that just, just matters more. Um, for builds just to have more flexibility but i'm sure i'm sure there's people that that would, that would say that that the, the ship is better than the, than, than the fleet for all but they're made at different times and they end up being for me about the same place and both from from the fleet as well the raw is also easier to access than the paladin but that's just a point for for another day after, after them is is the fleet ambassador as a note that i put i am putting this higher than the the legendary ambassador um this is this is a a strong starship um it is another full temporal starship um it is basically the tanky um variant of of the fleet for all now when the ambassador and the Veral for tier six did come out i initially did bash the Veral. i was like why would you make a battle cruiser when the other version was clearly meant to be a tank i've since learned my lesson you don't have to make a company ships that have that are like the exact same carbon copies. And in fact, it's probably better if if they're different because then the whole bundle makes more sense. You know, it makes more sense to buy both ships. So for me, this ship is still great. Unfortunately, that Lieutenant Commander seat needs to be tactical. Uh, there's not really any flexibility options for this. You can make it science and may make a pseudo science ship with this. I've done it before. Um, at this point in STO, the legendary um the legendary discovery temporal flight to carry is just a better platform to do that on. If you want to do a pseudo build like that and lose one more worthless ability in there, the ambassador is technically another option. But again, you don't have the hangar base that the discovery temporal flight to carry has. But then again, this is a much more affordable option, frankly, from from the fleet. If you wanted to do an off-meta exotic build, you could do that with the, with with this ship. And then we have this guy that I was really, really upset I had to put this in C tier. <sighs> but it's here, showing its ugly face in C tier. Um, I'm not a fan of the legendary Derodex. I've said that a lot on the channel um but if you're going to do exceeded ready limits this is one of the better platforms to do it on 
Um, because you've got C ray limits three plus recursive sharing one. That's a nice combo. If the ship was Lieutenant Commander Science Temporal, or if it had five forward weapons, or if it had hangar bays, I would be okay with the ship. <laughs> Griffith didn't do anything with the ship. Besides put Merrick Worker because they knew they were going to put Merrick Worker and they put Tactical Temporal because the, the, the Thry has Tactical Temporal. Which is which just like the Thry, if you're going to do Beam Overload with this ship, you can't use Beam Overload and Recursive and, um, and Recursive Sharing 1 on, on the same ship you used. You can't put both on, on the ship without downgrading, without downgrading Beam Overload from, from 3 to 2. If you go through, through tweets, I did tweet to a person at Cryptic saying this is how I think it should be fixed and that's that's what I, that's what I said it should be Lieutenant Commander Science Temporal 100% it should be that but nope they held their guns and that and so we have this ugly abomination if you're gonna do C-Ray limits the ship's fine it's on a horrible platform so so I mean I am grateful that they boosted its base movement because it was worse than the Mirk were Warbirds, and, War War and I still don't like this ship. And so it is for me, it's below the Mirk Work of Warbirds. But um, if I made this list and put all of, of the Warbirds in D tier, I, I, I would have put this ship above the Mirk Work of Warbirds, like right above instead of right below. But um, because I was just being simple in this video and just grouping the ships that are, that are equivalent just right next to each other, because I was, again, I wasn't accounting for the horribleness of warbirds when I made this list because otherwise D tier would D tier would be even worse than they already are. Um, I, I I decided to be to be simple, just keep the mega bundles together. Um, as thus, I do have this ranked a little bit lower, but it is slightly better than those Merc worker about Merc, Merc worker um, warbirds. If this ship wasn't an engineering warbird, I, I would have ranked this higher than um, the Sea Store um, cruisers, just as, as, as an FYI. Or if it had a hangar bay, or if it had 5 4 weapons, or any of those other things that I've mentioned. <sighs> Again, I'm, I'm disappointed by, by the starship. I hope Cryptic learns from it and makes many, many better ships, and hope hopefully buffs. Um, engineering warbirds in in the future because warbird battle cruiser in, in in a title doesn't make sense for a starship when, when there isn't really a difference between the the ship and regular engineering warbirds because neither ship has access to um to crit severity in their master package so to me that's it's all just the same thing cool okie dokie moving on we have the legendary ambassador So what is this ship? So in reference to this tier list, this is basically the Surgical Strikes variant of the Legendary Dideridex. Instead of Exceeded Rated Limits plus, rec plus Recursive Shearing 1, we have Surgical Strikes 3 plus Recursive Shearing 1. Otherwise, these two ships are pretty much in practice identical. So yes. This ship has Lieutenant Commander Universal Temporal. This ship is Lieutenant Commander Tactical Temporal with Lieutenant Commander Universal. In practice, you're going to make the Lieutenant Senate seat here tactical. And in practice, you'll make the Lieutenant Commander Universal seat here um, tactical. Okay. It's it's going to be, you're going to, you're going to build them basically the same. Um, and if you're going to try to use surgical strikes, you'll build it pretty similar. But it's... From the rough theoretical build standpoint, it's going to be similar. Surgical Strikes plus um, OSS-3, you know, you could do all that stuff with this ship. This one is, you know, sea rating limits plus the other Miracle Worker stuff. You know, Neurosensor bands, Mixed Armor Synergy, all that, all, all, all that jazz. So, sea rating limits plus Miracle Worker stuff, Surgical Strikes plus Intelligence stuff. Other than that, they're pretty much the same ship. Um, and again, I didn't really talk about this much on the channel because after I, I released the 11th anniversary um, bundle thing, they completely changed the Legendary Ambassador from Temporal Command to in Intel Temporal. 
which Intel Temporal hasn't been in, in the game before, which is, which is a nice refresher. Um, Temporal Command still actually is better. But, you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, it's nice to see something different. Um, it's different, it sucks, but hey, it's, 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 it's at least different. I think Intel Temporal would have worked way better on a science vessel, personally, because Intel and Temporal both work for exotic abilities, but, you know, it is what it is. Alongside that would be the lockbox, however you say that ship's name. Um, this is one of the ships that has six bridge officer seats, which is not very common in Star Trek Online. Um, commander, Lieutenant Commander, Double lead Lieutenant, Double Ensign. Um, an odd ship with double intel seating. And so for me, I basically view this, this as just a Lieutenant Commander intel seat, but it's got six seats. Um, and it's a 5 4 weapon ship with that an actual good hull and decent maneuverability. Its impulse sucks, but it, the rest of it's fine. All in all, this ship is not terrible. It's not great. But it's not terrible, at least, and so it's it stays out it stays out of D tier, at least. So, I think the ship's fine. Now, it's highly desirable because of its um, a certain trait from the ship, which is needed, almost needed on most torpedo boats nowadays. But um, it's you know it's 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 a fine platform, is what I'm saying. But you obviously wouldn't use this ship for a torpedo platform. So that's kind of the odd thing about the ship. This was, this was, you know, back in the day, you know, when we, you had the, um, the cross faction boxes with the traits from the other faction. Um, so yeah, because of, because of that no longer existing, um, the, 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 the ship is one of those ships that's expensive on, on the exchange if it's there. Um, alongside that, we have the Tal Shiar Dr. Battle Cruiser from the Lobby store. And, um, this is a, this is a commander universal seat. So that does help it a little. Um, and it, it's a battle cruiser. It's got good base stats, but it's got low maneuverability. So that sucks. Um, what hurts the ship is that we recently got a sea store escort, which is Com Lieutenant Commander Command with Lieutenant Intel. So I have to ask, why would I get this ship? When I can get the Sea Store App Appalachia, which I rated as a good ship, by the way, in the escort video, feel free to see that. Um, and we basically have the same thing on a worse platform. So I, I had to rank this lower because of that. Like it, it's it's still a decent ship. It looks cool. You get commander. You you get commander tactical, which is great, but. There are better, cheaper options in the game, frankly. So this this thing has to go lower because of that. Right alongside him is the is the Zenkethi Battle Cruiser. Um, the way to think about this ship, honestly, when you look at look at its base stats and what it's doing, um, think about this as the Liberated Borg ju Juggernaut, but a cheaper, worse. Um, low, 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 low by version of the of the Liberty Board Juggernaut or or the Vodbar ju Juggernaut, frankly. Um, I, either of them could basically work for this. You're basically looking at a, a Juggernaut converted into a battle cruiser and intentionally made worse with a smidgen high maneuver, uh, maneuverability, but made way, way, way worse. So that, that that's kind of what you're looking at here. Um, can the ship work? Sure. Like you, you're you're going to make a double lieutenant commander, and, you, and you've got a uh, miracle worker for one of those lieutenant commander tactical seats, so it 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 can work for sure. Um, but because of its price tag versus other ships, it's not one that I typically recommend. Probably something I'm going to say a lot in this video, frankly, from this point on. But um, <laughs> it's it's still fine. Um, it's not exceptional, but it's a fine starship. Um, alongside that is the Herald Quas Flight Deck Carrier. This is another one that it's a good ship, but it's definitely a relic of its time. Um, it still has good hull and shields. 1.3 hull, 1.3 shields, 8 turn, 
not a bad ship. Um, it just doesn't have exceptional bridge officer seating. And it's here because of the flight deck carrier privilege, frankly. Um, it's got two hangar bays, reasonable durability, and it's a flight deck carrier. And it's got enough tactical consoles to not be in, the, in lower tiers. Unfortunately, there is a flight deck carrier that's stuck in E tier because of not enough tactical abilities. But besides that one, you're not really going to see flight deck carriers really that low on this list. And this is about as low as they can, they can go with, without other extenuating circumstances showing up. Still is a fine ship. If you have her, she's still fine to tank in. You'll just build her in a lot of the same ways you'll probably build some of the other ships that I show off later um, on, on the channel. So still good durability, still a flight deck carrier. It's not going to go down into, into terrible tier by any means. And then around there is the Rysian cruiser. And this might be surprising to some of you, but um, the Rising Cruiser has Lieutenant Commander Temporal. So you can have Beam Overload 3 and Recursive Sharing 1 on this platform. Now, it has the slight downside of that you have actually one less tactical console potential over the Tier 5. But assuming that you use um, Recursive Sharing 1, I, th I think it is an upgrade. Um, over over its tier five variant. Now, if you don't use recursive sharing one, then I would say the tier five is probably a little bit, bit better for you. Um, that being said, no, it's still a fine ship. Um, no special, no commander special seats. That kind of sucks. But a lot of the ships from here on out are going to have that going to have that same issue. And with that, we are out out of C tier. Now we're entering D tier. Oh man. All right. Let's hope I, I, I don't bash these ships too hard. Um, to start off with, um, we're going to start to get into ships that are going to be controversial that I'm placing them this low. And I totally get it. You're welcome to not like me for this, but these are ships that I think, in my opinion, if I was picking one of these ships, I'm picking them for, for the looks. Or unless there's some other weird extenuating circumstance that makes me want to pick them. And these are ships that are st they're still serviceable. Um, but they don't have stuff sticking out, frankly. It's just, just what it comes down to it. And when we're talking about cruisers that aren't sticking out, and you don't have great things to begin with on, on cruisers, that means, to be honest here, pretty much any escorts can be better than these ships. And that includes the legendary Kelvin Constitution. The ship's fine, but if you actually look, look, look at its base stats and compare it to the legendary D7, the D7 is completely superior to this ship. Like, it has better hull and shields, it's got better maneuverability, and it replaces that Lieutenant Commander Intel with Lieutenant Commander Miracle Worker. And it's got a battle cloak. The Legendary D7 is completely superior to this ship. So for me, that ship has to go way higher than this one. And I mean, this one's just an okay ship. Um, it's here. It's on the cusp of C tier. Um, but that lower durability versus other comparables price ships does put it down here. It's still an okay ship, just not an exceptional one. And then we have the SOA, which I view as, because it's Lieutenant Command, so Lieutenant Commander Command, I view it as basically just the same as the Kelvin County. Um, you're not adding too much to the ship. A smidget for um, durability, if you want um, rather play marker for it, but in the grand scheme of things for DPS stuff, you're probably just going to build it just like any of the other main, main ships and just make it just five standard tactical abilities for the ship. And in that case, it's just the Intel stuff that you're going to be using for, for the ship. It's got decent maneuverability, but just like the legendary Kelvin Connie, you don't have, have a cloak. You don't have the extra stuff that Commander Intel should be giving you. So it doesn't have a lot that's really sticking out for these ships. Um, I wish I, I could be kinder to her. Um, but I can't. So, because I 
don't like these ships. They don't have cloaks that the Grand Hotel should be giving you. And all the other weaknesses of them, I have to put them here in D tier. Right alongside them is strength, because again, as I've noted before, I view Commander Intel basically the same as Lieutenant Commander Intel. I have the Fleet Avenger right here too, and, and the Fleet Moog, which is the, the, which the Avenger is, is the Arbiter, but, but, but the Fleet Variant. Both basically the exact same ship. Um, it's just that the Klingon version has, has a cloak. The first one doesn't. Very, very comparable ships to the other ones as well. These ships have just higher base stats or higher base durability stats for a little bit less and of maneuverability. Otherwise, they're extremely comparable otherwise. Um, and it, you know, it makes sense in Star Trek Online's lore that these are the precursors to the Fleet Merrick World War Worker Battle Cruisers because the performance really do, does match it. There is a very stark difference in performance between these ships and the Fleet Merrick World War Worker Battle Cruisers. Now, then Cryptic decided to partially retcon the lore and then say, oh, but even though we just made the Merrick Worker Battle Cruisers, we're now going to look to the even farther past of the old Fleet Battle Cruisers and pull from the inquiry and make a new line of starships, make them exclusive in promo pack. I don't know where that line of lore came from. I don't know why Cryptic thought that that would be acceptable. <sighs> it's like sometimes people, it's like sometimes that Cryptic just makes lines of lore and hopes that people aren't actually reading the lore. I don't know. Maybe that's just me throwing stuff out there. But um, yes, these ships are are not great. They are not exceptional. And it's sad that the performance really does match it. They still have the battle cruiser chassis, so they are higher than a lot of other ships in this list, but they aren't really that exceptional. Just kind of the way it is. Um, now, right behind them, is where I would put the promo Alachi Sheshar. Which is one of the worst promo ships in the game. Especially considering how lots of other stuff has scaled in the game. Like, sure, it's got reasonable durability. Its mobility still sucks. And it's only a partial specialization seeming starship. Like, I don't get these starships, frankly. Um, if we were going to change the promo Alachi starships... Because the two variants, uh, because one's called a, a command dreadnought cruiser and one's called an intel dreadnought cruiser, I would say to Cryptic, hey, how about for the command version, you add commander command seating, and then for the Sheshar intel version, add commander intel and, and give it a cloak. Because then it would fall more in line with why it would have that specialization in the title of the, of the ship itself. It wouldn't make the ships fantastic. It make the make this one actually more serviceable at least. Um, but um, the Intel one, one would still struggle. But at least it would be thema it would be thematically appropriate, and it would rhyme with how a lot of the other older ships, like this, like like the Lockbox Verns, that were temporal ships and but only had Lieutenant Commander temporal. And those ones got full temporal spec. I think these ships should be getting that too. And if, and if that happened, the this Elijah Sheshaw would, would probably go up to C tier. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it probably would, would, would deserve C tier. Um, probably an upper C tier. It, it probably at least would jump up to C tier or something worthwhile to get. Or is it something that's maybe, <laughs> maybe you should just pass on. Um, now, the, the bridge of the Elijah ships are, are cool. And this is one of the ships that I used to get, that I used to fly. Okay, the, because of its base stats, I used to fly the ship a lot for for tanking. Okay, and I think the the, the design is is cool. It's cool. It's it's unique. It's it's a callback to the Romulan storyline, which is like the best storyline in the game, frankly. Now the Fit Victory's life stuff is very very close to it because it ties really well into both STO and DS9 which I think is awesome uh, but, but but I think in terms of actually 
like for a full production value, Victory's Life is better from the actual technical writing and actual what the story actually is standpoint. I think the Romulan storyline itself for the Romulan faction is actually the best one in the game. Um, but yeah, like in, in modern STO for a lot of Lachi starships, they just don't stick out like like modern ships do. Now, granted, I think if this wasn't the first ship, this was I think the Intel was probably the first one, but this is this is this is one of the first promo ships period in the game. Now, I, I think if I recall correctly, I think that tier five Voth Dreadnought Cruiser technically might have been one of the, might it might have been like a precursor to this because there was weird stuff going on at the at the time. They were adding that stuff to the game. But I didn't think the launcher ship was one of one of those first promo ships. And it's showing its age. Um I think if if they don't buff this ship and they keep on adding new promo ships, I think the Alachi ship probably deserves to downgrade into into lockbox. I'm just gonna be honest here. I I I, I think it's at this point that it probably should. Um, but that's just my personal opinion on it. Um, alongside that, we have the Zal Heavy Heavy Cruiser. This is a starship that um, it, it could work as a, as a tank with with its seating. Um, also with a Sigmar Command plus a Lieutenant Power Tactical, it works as, as a torque boat. Unfortunately, with, with the modern meta, uh, Commander Engineering sucks, and it doesn't have anything else that's sticking out for the ship in particular. People typically just get this ship for the Invincible trait. And it's just a standard run-of-the-mill cruiser, so with four forward weapons and four rear weapons. So not the best ship in the world. Um, but hey, there could be worse options if you really wanted to go that, and there's less flexible options as well, much, much later down the line in this list. Uh, alongside that is the Alachi Battle Cruiser. This is basically the Alachi Dreadnought Cruiser, but um, it's a Battle Cruiser instead of Dreadnought Cruiser. Slightly more flexible seating, slightly worse stats overall, in my opinion. Again, I'm I'm a tank, so that's me looking at the raw stats, and I like the durability more than, than the mobility here. But it's still really reasonably maneuverable. I can definitely see arguments as, as to why this would actually be better than the Dreadnought Cruiser. I there, a lot of these are in roughly the same realm of of power to me. So the ship's okay, um, but I don't think it's super exceptional. Um, and again, with a lot of a lot of Alachi ships from back in that time. There are definitely um, issues with with a lot of those ships back then. <sighs> so yeah, still still has a cool bridge though. Moving on is our first fleet sovereign. There are several different sovereigns, and so this will be the first one. Um, this could be a decent tank platform, by the way. Um, you're probably going to make this into a torpedo one. Unfortunately, it's another one that has this dead commander engineering, so it's not really optimal. And you have a second secondary non ensign engineering C two, so that definitely sucks in that regard. Um, you guys will make her work slightly more maneuverable than your lower end for cruisers, not by much, but it's there. Uh, one point four through hole is good for tanking, though. So. I think it works better as a tank than a torque boat, but you can still make it as, as a torque boat as well. You might see a pattern with some of these ships, by the way. Um, ship's fine, not, not not exceptional, but it's it's okay versus a lot of these other ships here. And alongside them is where I would put the Hidden Alliance Battle Cruiser, and it's for a lot of the same reasons, frankly. Like, is this ship decent? Yeah. Is it as strong for? For a speedboat, as many of the other options in this list, no. There's a lot of better options in in this list already, and guess what? Command seating is one of the most frequent seatings available for cruisers in general. So yes, this this was a a decent event ship. I think for event ships, the ship was a good ship. It looked really good. Is it one that I think is super exceptional for modern STO? No. 
And I think that and that's why it was released as, as an event ship. It's also why whenever the, the Temeric came out, I was so surprised the Cryptic let a ship that strong get through to being an event ship. Uh, I think that was a personal mistake on their part, but you know you can't nerf a service's bridge officer seating and weapon layout. You just can't do that. So you have to nerf them in other ways, and I think that's actually what happened to the Temeric. But anyway, um, this, the, this ship is... Now, if you're going to do a tort boat, there are there are worse options in in the game. Um, reasonable durability, reasonable maneuverability. A lot of these are again in the same realm of of, of power. Now, I, I would say, from a stats perspective, I actually would say that the, the Nimitz is worse because you're stuck with with, with an extra force ensign seat, and you're losing one tactile console over over the the Kenimer. So. For me, and it was also really weird that, that, that they put the fleet Nimitz of all starships into tier five military. Like, what was what was the starship? Or what what, what could we think about the starship that made it so powerful that, that they had to lock it in tier five military? That did not make sense to me. Like, whenever you lock something in tier five military, it either needs to be something that's really powerful. Or it needs to be something that is so nostalgic that people want to build up fleets to get a tier five military to get that ship. Maybe it's me, but I do, I just don't feel that with with the Europa. Um, I mean, I, I I'll see some from 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 time to time. They're like never the fleet version because the fleet version is tier five military. But I'll occasionally see sea store Europas in TFOs. So I guess maybe the looks is is enough, but I don't know. It it's it's still a downgrade from the Kenimer. Now, um, at this point, we drop another layer because now we're getting into torque boats that don't have high yield three, and this is where the Tholian Tarantula comes in. It's still a little bit higher than some of the other ones because even though it doesn't have that technically in the right group um you can use the tholian hanger pets to um, do some debuffing granted there, there's a lot of them and those debuffers have torpedoes for a lot of the same reasons why it wasn't like those things people shouldn't like um the terran empire frigates but these ones do fire much more torpedoes because there are lots of little things versus one or cup two like big frigates so I can definitely get why this is going to be more more noticeable, but that's why people don't like these um, the, the 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 really good Tholian debuffing hanger pets because of those those I mean, tor those torpedoes that, that that those pets fire. Still reasonable um, if if you're wanting to do a tanking stuff with with a dreadnought cruiser, there are worse options than this. Um, I think there's still a lot of better ones too, um, from a durability or from a maneuverability standpoint. Still, it's a Dreadnought Cruiser. It's got command seating, so you can get Suppression Barrage 1 if you really want. If you really don't want to have Firewall 3. Um, but you can't have Contra Five Power 3 and High Yield 3 on, on this ship. So that definitely does hurt it, and there's no primary specialization to back it up either. And it's in the same vein of thought, we have the Breen Resureth. Um, its unique um, consoles help to boost it up a little bit. Um, it does have really good hull, um, and for its age, and for being an event ship, it is still decently good. Um, but from a mechanical standpoint, outside of tanking, this is a ship that does struggle have, have heavily inside of the game. So, for me, it makes sense for it for it to go here uh, versus elsewhere on on this tier list. And alongside that is the Zeni Primate Atalith Dreadnought Cruiser. People get this ship for its starship trait. People don't typically get this ship to fly. Still, it does have Commander Intel. Um, sorry, um, Lieutenant Barrier Command plus Lieutenant Intel seating. Um, so it's another one of situations where it's like the Sea Store Appalachia, but way, way worse um, and a little bit more expensive. But yeah, people get this ship for its starship trait for beam overload builds, not actually to fly this ship. So. Those of you wondering the price on this thing, it's it's because of the, of the starship trait. That's why people actually get this ship. From an actual performance standpoint, tanking or 
you used use torpedoes and you don't have high yield three on on the platform. And then we get the fleet hot packs, or however you say that word, advanced warbird. Just remind you all that warbirds suck. Um, I even though this was in the D tier, I decided to, I decided to put it down a little bit. From a performance standpoint, it's technically a little bit better than the, sh the ships right above it, but I did put a little tiny warbird penalty on this thing because. This is my list. Even though I'm not adjusting outside of each tier, if the ship falls inside that tier, I'm still going to have my vengeance. Cool. All right. Yeah. Like, if, if you don't care about all the huge downsides that the engineer warbirds have, this is still a fine ship. It's, its mobility sucks because a lot of the old warbirds have horrible mobility i don't get why cryptic felt that they needed to punish these even worse than they were already punishing them but that's what they decided to do so that's what it is and then you oh this is i forgot to um change the um the the, the, the name of this but this is the the, the deridex when you have 120 ships you're gonna you're gonna forget a couple of things um this is the, the deridex and it's already three hours, so I'm not going to go and, and record three hours again. Um, this is the Fleet de Deridex, um, Dreadnought Battlecruiser. Um, it's, it's got one less Tafel console over, over the Fleet Hob, Hobpox, um, and it's got one less tactical, tactical um, seat or tactical ability. And it's trading, it, it's trading um, Lieutenant Science and Tactical Tactical for Lieutenant Prior Science and, and Lieutenant Tactical. So you're losing a Lieutenant Prior Tactical ability which is pretty pretty significant, frankly. So, and basically all, all builds, the, the, this is worse than the hot box. Alongside that is where I'll, I'll put the Imperial. Um, it's basically the same as the, the Vizier, except it's a Lieutenant Commander Intel, so Lieutenant Commander Command, which I, which I do feel is a bit weaker than, than, than Command CD. Because with because with with Intel seating, it's pretty much if it's just that's just by itself. It's basically just doing energy based builds. If you have command, at least you can do tanking and um, torpedo stuff a little bit easier than, than you can with just Intel. Otherwise, the stats are, are the same here versus the Vizier from earlier. And right after him is where I, I would put the Cardassian Keldon, um, another one of ships that I, that I liked for a while, but I've but I went very, very nitpicky in this list. And sure, this ship has more maneuverability, but it's not really getting all that much extra um, on the other ship. Sure, a secondary Intel seat alongside Lieutenant Commander Intel, but you're, but you're losing the attack to the console. I, got, I went, went back and forth for a while, but I, but I think they, they, they would have been about equal, but the minus one tactical console really sold it that this ship is a little bit weaker for me. Now, this is just, you know, this is me. This is my tier list. For you, you might rate the Cardassian Kelden a little bit higher. But for me in this tier list, I think it's a little bit worse. But you consider all that and, and its pricing difference. Right alongside them are the fleet advanced light cruisers. Now, it might be surprising to y'all that I'm actually going to use the Fleet Miranda um, in the cookie cutter tanking video. That's because for tanking, it's actually not bad. It's actually fine. For six tactical abilities on, on a cruiser, the ship's fine. It doesn't have any exceptional seating, uh, but if you're going to do reverse shield 33 with six tactical abilities, like if you're, you're going to do a broadside and polar on build, you ideally want six tactical abilities at least, the Fleet Miranda works well for, for, for all that. Um, but of course the Sea Storm Miracle Worker Cruisers are just this but better um, and again as I've said in this video with time Air Pilot not really that worthwhile um, that being said you know for just the base bridge officer seating if you're going to tank it's actually it's actually decent seating it's just that if you're trying to do actual damage a lot of other ships are going to do way better than, than these are going to um, now, 
um, outside of the Miranda version, we have the Klingon version, which is a battle cruiser. And then we have the Romulan version, which again, I forgot to, to, to rename this, um, the stats, the, um, the, um, the, the name for this ship. Um, a couple of these are going to come up in this video. Um, but, um, the Romulan version has, has the, has the correct stats here that it's, that as with the, as is regular for most Romulan sh versions, you, you basically get the worst stats of both and you get a battle cloak instead of, instead of the cruiser commands, which sucks. Um, but you know, it is what it is overall, because I'm, I'm a tank captain. I would prefer the one with all cruiser commands. Um, and also, I mean, it's, it's, it's the Miranda, the, the Miranda is cool and nice looking. Oh. Um, as a um, side note, this advanced light battle cruiser, um, this is the starship that Captain Corrin um, was kicking butt in um, before she was assigned to um, to commission and and command the IKS board task. By the way, like she was she was ki she was kicking butt in a Miranda the, the KD version of, of of the Miranda against ships way 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 higher than 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 her starship should have been able to take on it's also why i really 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 want i really really want a legendary bortosk because she's she was like one of like the most feared captains in the klingon, klingon empire like she deserves a legendary ship even if it wasn't in any comic or whatever or movie, the 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 Bortas needs to get a legendary version. So is 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 what I'm saying. If if you're trying to do a good cruiser without any strong special seating on on the cruiser chassis, this is honestly about as good as you're going to get in, in inside of the game. For getting a ship that that's better than this, you need special seating in order to really do it. You need special seating, or you need a better chassis, like a, a fr like the frigate chassis, for instance. The ship doesn't have either of that, and so this is pulling as much of a weight as, as it possibly can with those 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 big limitations in place. Cool. Okay, okay. After that is where I would put the Alachi, the the, the, the other Alachi um dread 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 from that cruiser, and it's the Intel version. Only has five tactical consoles and Lieutenant Commander Intel. I do consider that, for me, a little bit weaker. But um, if you really like um, using several Intel abilities, I, I can see this being better than the, than the Miranda. I do not think it's worth promo pricing, though. 100% is not worth a promo pack um, box for, for the Starship nowadays. Um, maybe get it if, you know, someone just had it and they're like, I've been holding on to this ship for a couple of years. Can somebody please buy it? I'll, I'll give super reduced pricing. Maybe at that point it's a worthwhile buy. But if you're going out of your way to get a promo pack for this thing, I would say it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Um, lower than that is, is the Benthan Assault Cruiser. It's a Lieutenant Intel Cruiser. Um, technically has higher attack seeing, but it's only got Lieutenant Commander Tactical with two Lieutenant Tactical seats potentially for the ship. It's still oh, it's still okay, but it's definitely showing its age. Um, like this is this is the snapshot from um, the S2 Wiki, which you you can see that it's decent graphics from what people have done inside the game versus this was what the promo um that the promo p p picture was for the ship, and you can see how outdated the graphics were for what good the screenshots were at, at the time. The game has visually evolved quite a bit from this time. The ship has not. It still has, has a, a unique weird design, but the game itself for stuff has, has evolved since the ship. Then we have this Ferengi Negus Marauder. I do not know how this ship was given out. I don't have this ship. 
Um, so I'm, I'm going strictly from the bridge officer CD and stats in terms of relative strength to how I've experienced similar ships around the game because I don't have this ship. I can't judge this ship by flying it because I've never flown this ship. I don't have access to this ship. Um, this is an old exclusive starship. If you have it, cool. Um, I have no idea the parameters and how it, it was given out and like two and like the two times it was given out. Like we we, we got the we got the we got the Ferengi Quark Marauder, which has its own issues because it only has um, four tactical abilities. That's why it's going. That's why it's going to be an E tier, by the way. Um, but the Ferengi, the Ferengi Nagus, so even out in some weird way. So the Quark came out much more recently to be like for people that wanted a tier six Marauder, um, but didn't get this ship. They didn't know how to, and they're asking like cryptic, um, how in the world did you get this out? And to my un understanding, this ship isn't even available at all outside of those select players on PC that that happen to have it. Um, combine that with its lackluster bridge officer seating. I think it it deserves its spot. If you happen to have it. Feel free to let me know how it actually performed, but I think I think this is a fair assessment. Now, a little bit below them is the lockbox TOS Dreadnought Cruisers. Now you're gonna notice um, some of the stuff here is a little bit different. Like for instance, the Atlas has standard Dreadnought Cruiser commands. I've listed the D9 as having offensive cruiser commands. The STO Wiki disagrees with me. But I have a D9 and an Atlas and a Thry. I have all three of these freaking starships. <laughs> okay. I can tell you all because I checked before I made the video. Just double check before with those characters that have these ships. I can tell you all the D9 does not have a commander track fire. It doesn't. So the wiki is wrong. People have corrected it several times. And then people were like, no, but it's a, it's a Dreadnought Cruiser and they change it back. So I have, I am done <laughs> with, with worrying about that. Um, the things that hurt this, these ships, and actually the ships look great. Like for, for TOS ships that a lot of ships haven't aged the greatest. Now the Thry has some issues because the, uh, a, lo a lot of vanity shields don't apply to, to the bottom part of, of, of the ship. I don't get why it applies to this top part really well, but not to the bottom. And so a lot of times you have to, you have to look, look at materials that um, will blend well with, with the bottom because the bottom doesn't really change that much. And the decal never goes away either for, for the Star, Robin and Star Empire. So something really weird and wonky with that ship. But ultimately with, with these ships, um, their big issue is that their big seat is Lieutenant Commander Temporal. Except that's your one Lieutenant Commander seat. So you can't really do Beam Overload 3 with um, with Recursive Shared 1 with these starships. So you have the downgrade to Beam Overload 2, or you just don't use Recursive Sharing on the starships themselves. Which does cause issues. Um, that that is, is a big downside for me personally. Now, for tactical command, or sorry, um, having having temporal and command seating, you can still make a decent tank out of this with the, the defensive stuff and heals available from temporal and command. But you're still going to be you're still going to be building mostly like like a regular starship without specializations, pretty much. Um, now, the Atlas is still highly sought after because of the DPRM. I think we were, we're finally starting to get better clicky consoles to the point that the DPRM isn't as prioritized as it used to be, which I am grateful for. Um, it's still probably going to take a long time before the demand starts to go down. Um, I mean, I, I still have a couple of the, um, I still have a couple of the boxes for the cross fashion consoles from, from back when those still existed. Um, in my account bank that I might give out at some point, but um, yeah, these these ships like aren't the greatest, 
And so they are here in D tier. Um, but ultimately, um, if you don't care about special C, I think the ships are still okay. Uh, better for tanking than they are for, for the other types of stuff in the, in the game. Uh, but it's but but we aren't into the territory where they're so problematic that you can't make them work, or you're gonna have to you're gonna start struggling to make structures like like this actually work. So that's why they're there. And then the Vorgon Dreadnought Carrier, they're basically they're basically the TOS Dreadnought Cruisers, but with, with a three five layout. And yes, that actually is right. It actually is three weapons in the front, five in the rear with Lieutenant Commander Temporal. Um, I've actually seen people do really fun mind builds with this thing because you actually can have five mines in the back. Uh, I think still Command Scene is better for mines, if I recall correctly. But this ship is one of, the, one of those ships with five ones in the rear, so you can actually do weird shenanigans like that. So you, you have that weird aqua awkward bridge officer seating and l one less tackle console. To me, this ship is clearly below the TOS Direct Dreadnought Cruisers. A little bit below them is Valor Astica Heavy Heavy Battle Cruiser, which only has Lieutenant Command. It does, does, doesn't even have the Lieutenant Commander Temporal, it's just Lieutenant Command. It is a battle cruiser with high hull HP. And that's pretty much it for, 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 for the Starship. So is it okay? It's okay, a little bit, but I mean, they're not really getting much more than just the raw bridge officer seating. Maybe a little bit for the tanking side of things with Lieutenant Command for Rod Point Marker, but that's not much. That's not much, especially for a non-fleet starship at this point in Star Trek Online. So, But it still has five tactical abilities, so it's not in E territory yet. Same thing with the Lobi Walker, which has Lieutenant Pilot and Ensign Intel. Now, for story time here, um, I do have some sentiment for, for this ship. Um, this was the first um, cruiser, or at least until I learned about the Sul Um But this was, this was the first like real cruiser that I was familiar with that was accessible to the Romulan re, re, Republic captains. I actually made a new Romulan Republic captain specifically to fly the little, the little by Walker class. Um, back, back, back around time when this thing was going, to, was going to come out. I specifically made a new character just because the Walker came out. Because as a tank captain, I was always frustrated that there weren't really many ships at all for the Romulans, prefer tier six starships that had Cruiser commands, because because I love cruiser commands, but I also love playing Romulans with with SROs, and so you know this, this was back in the day when I didn't do Star Trek comparisons. I didn't you know um, compare all the different ships in in the game, um, and so I was like probably many of you like I I saw a new ship. I was like oh this thing sounds really cool. I didn't really think about all the alternatives. I'm like all right I'll make make a new ship or make make a new character. I will grind some of the stuff to get the lobi I needed to get the ship. Um, and then I realized, oh, I, I, I can sell max master keys and that's just easier and cheaper that way. And I, I did it that way uh, by, you know, letting this to Zen and all, and all that fun jazz. And, and then I got the ship and, and it was fun to fly. Um, now it's pretty saying it was still kind of sucks, but Hey, you know what? It was a cruiser on my Romulan the captain. And, and, and it was fun. Um, it was back at that time when that was new. It was this ship, and then the Crossfield, and the Sarcophagus. Sarcophagus was just for Roman Allied KDF, and then the um, the Crossfield in this ship was for the Federation. And then because the Sarcophagus had Honor Dead, you you got cross faction boxes to get the Honor Dead trait for your Federation captain that you had in in the Walker class, and it, it was fun. Um, its seating today is pretty lackluster because I don't, I don't value pilot scene, so it's really just an ensign intel is all that this ship has. But it's got five tactical abilities. And so it's here in the list. It's got full cruiser command, so it is what it is.
And then we have this ship. That is lower because it's 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 a warbird. But it's got five tactical consoles, so And so it's here. That's that's just really just the reason. If if I if I didn't have the engineering warbird bias, this would have been higher than the Lowe Walker class. Cool. Okie dokie. And that being said, we are now done with D tier starships. So just as a reminder, in order for a starship to make it to E tier, it has to either not have between four tactical seats and universal seats, it can't have, it, 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 or it's unable to have five tactical abilities between all other all seats as a maximum possibility, or it, it's a starship, or and or, um, it's a starship that lacks a Lieutenant Commander tactical seat or higher. Because of that, there are some starships that, starships that probably don't belong in E tier that I've put towards the very, very top of E tier. And there's two ships right off the bat that I think don't belong here. But because I'm trying to be consistent to how I've, I've organized these starships, I have stated like, yeah, based upon the way I've organized these ships, these starships, these two ships, don't really belong here, but based upon these rules, they are showing up here. And the first one that really doesn't belong is the Cardassian flight deck carrier. And it's because it's a starship with only four tactical abilities available to it. With tank rare tactical and ensign and ensign tactical available to the ship itself. It is a it is a flight deck carrier, which automatically means it doesn't belong in E tier. By my silly rules of how I've organized starships so that I can get a couple of certain starships like at the very, very bottom of E tier. Um, this ship ended up having to be forced into E tier as well. I think this is actually a great ship. I still think it's one of the better sea store starships to buy if you're only gonna, gonna get one tier six starship. You just have to keep in mind, you're only gonna have four tactical abilities and you have a lot of engineering abilities you have to deal with. So you are gonna do Oxtavat with this ship. It's just the way that this ship works. As long as you recognize that, and recognize you're going to have you're going to be light on tactical abilities so you have to be very smart in what tactical abilities that you use with this ship this ship is completely fine okay okie dokie alongside this ship another really great ship that that unfortunately got put into e-tier was the was was the was the was the quark ferengi marauder this is another starship with only four tactical abilities but this is one of the better exceed ready limits platforms in in the game so it probably doesn't belong here either. But because it only has four tactical abilities, it also got stuck here. It still has a loose tank fire tactical, so you can do beam overload with things, st stuff with this thing just fine as well. You are still just gonna be high on engineering abilities. And that's that, that's part of the nature with, with this platform. If you aren't gonna do CRA limits, definitely there are many, many better options to use. I mean, many cheaper options to use instead of the Starship. Despite being E tier, being forced E tier by, by my own rules, this is still a good starship. And if we weren't doing by those certain rules, I probably would have put this into, into like B or, or C tier. Now, um, by my real rules as well, and other ones that are kind of okay, but definitely do struggle, are, are the fleet command um, dreadnought cruisers, the fleet Coge and, and the fleet card Cardenas. These ones deserve the um, criticism that they got because they were forced to have um and logically it would have made sense for the ship to have lieutenant Commander tactical command and ensign tactical with lieutenant universal instead of cryptic decided to give us triple lieutenant seating fortunately two of those lieutenant seats were tactical and there was a lieutenant U universal which means even though it doesn't have uh, lieutenant Commander tactical at least the ship can still have six tactical abilities which puts it here in this list because it's, it's got that plus full command specialization. So even though you don't have a Lieutenant Bar Tactical Seat, it is still very durable. Um, in fact, it's for, a fleet, for a fleet starship, it's actually ridiculously durable. Um, and it has full command seating. So you can do tanking on, on this with Suppression Barrage 3. You, you still can do torpedo stuff if you're willing to um, only have high, high yield 2. Um, but, but there is that stuff it has to overcome and there's a huge downside. So it's, it is deserving of E, but not in, in the low end of, of E tier starships. Cool. Okie dokie. 
Moving on is the Legendary Galaxy. Which is another starship with only four tactical abilities. Um, I feel it is about in the same strength as the um, as as those fleet sh those fleet ships. Um, granted, it's it's, it's just because it just has four bridge officer seats. I do not like this ship. I think it is bad, um, and I think of all of all, of all the legendary starships released thus far, it is probably the worst one of of all the legendary ships. And so, it's deserving of hate. When the tenth anniversary Legend, legendary Bonus came out, I said I. Like in, in that value section, I valued the, the Legendary Galaxy at, at zero. Because I didn't really see the point for the ship. And I still don't really see the point for the ship besides Space Barbie. Space, Bar Space Barbie is the only real reason why I, I, I see a reason to fly this ship. There are many, many ships better than this. Especially sh ships at, at cheaper or, or, or equivalent prices, frankly. Still, you 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 can do um, concentrate five power three with high, high yield three with this ship. You just don't have a ton of extra tactical abilities beyond that really to do for this ship. So that is it. That is is its big downside. Below that is where I would put the fleet Intel battle cruisers. Now these are the Intel ships from Delta Rising. These are here partly because I wanted to point out. These two ships here, the Fleet Kib and the Fleet Eclipse, are the same ship. I'll, I'll, I'll let that sink in for a moment. So when we look at these two ships, what we're going to notice is the Klingon ship and the Federation ship have literally the exact same bridge officer seating, exact same consoles. Both have access to dual cannons, and both have two cruiser commands. They're they they're basically just battle cruiser commands, but it's base, but it's it's actually the raider, it's actually the frigate ones now because it doesn't have the shield one. But they but they have but they, but they have the weapon one and they have the engine one. This happened a little bit from time to time with a lot of the early starships that had commander intel because they wanted to have an extra downside for having commander intel so early in 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 the, in, the, in the initial tier six era. I don't get why. And so, and so what's confusing to me, and also the, the Eclipse is just a cloak while the Klingon one is, is a battle cloak. Um, so what's confusing to me is they call the Kib a battle cruiser and they call the Eclipse a cruiser. But in everything else, you know, when it comes to mastery package, everything else, it's a battle cruiser. And when I've talked about the Eclipse a few times on, on the channel, um, one of the f frequent questions um, that I would have, have to clarify with players is, no, the Eclipse Intel Cruiser does not have command attract fire because it is not a cruiser. It is a battle cruiser. And yet Cryptic, for all of these years, has still insisted to keep the name cruiser on, on the Eclipse. I do not understand why. Maybe it's because they're incompetent. Maybe it's because they're stubborn. Maybe it's because they're lazy. I don't know. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same ship as, as the Kib, just worse. And released at basically the same time. That being said, does the Eclipse look cool? Yes. The Eclipse looks awesome. And um, it's reintroduction to players with our new with, with, with that new mirror episode i was like yeah these these intel ships look the, the, the these old you know starfleet intelligence clean intelligence ships like they look good and despite their age they do hold up okay now they obviously struggle in some ways but they from the look standpoint they hold up okay now from a bridge officer standpoint i think they struggle Only four four weapons and meant to be a energy based platform. I think they struggle now. When Delta Rising came out, and I will admit this, um, surgical strikes at launch of Delta Rising was brokenly o o overpowered. It was very very strong, um, and many of the Intel stuff was so strong that it overshot a lot of stuff in in the game. 
combined with the other issues that Delta Rising had, people real with, with a huge amount of grind people had with levels and getting mastery st starts of mastery experience, people realizing people realizing certain patrols would give you lots of experience without cooldowns, and so people would do that, and then they would get banned because Cryptic thought they were hacking the game when they were just playing the game as, as intended. And then Bordica said that players love the game, the famous thing, and yeah. There were some interesting things that happened during that time, to say the least, um, that a lot of people left the game because of it. Um, with these ships, do I think they're okay? They're okay. Um, the Kib has is just more durable. It's more it's more maneuverable, and it's got a battle cloak over over the Eclipse's cloak. So if we're comparing these two ships, I have to put the Kib ab above it. Um, but in either case, it only has four tactical abilities, and they're really old ships. So for me, it um, for me they have to be here in in the list. Right after him is the Fleet um, Galaxy X Dreadnought Cruiser. Um, another starship with only four tactical abilities, and unlike the legendary Galaxy um, Exploration Cruiser, the Galaxy X um, does not have full command seating. That being said, you've got an extra tactical console. So, like, whenever the 10th anniversary bundle initially came out, I, I would have agreed with the assessment that the Galaxy X was just the better ship. Now, with what the buffs to the command specialization, um, with the other options in, in command, um, I would say the Galaxy X is a little bit worse from the fleet than than, than the legendary Galaxy. Now, I, I, now obviously the, the the legendary Galaxy X is still a fantastic starship with five four weapons and all the other stuff available to it, but the fleet Galaxy X does struggle. It only has three tactical build, or sorry, has four tactical abilities. A, just a lieutenant, lieutenant commander tactical plus ensign um, tactical available to to the ship. Can you get concentrated fire power three and high yield three? Yeah. But you can't do too much else with with the ship, and you're very very high on entry and seating to really do much much else with the ship. And Oxbat isn't really the ideal for tor torpedo stuff, so you're probably gonna be doing tanking with with, with this thing. And then the Terminator Vanguard Dreadnought Cruiser is the exact same thing as the Galaxy X, but it's it's, it's from from the C store, so it, it, it's a little bit more expensive, and you're replacing a console with the wingman mechanic. And so for me. They're basically the same ship, but this one is cheaper than this one. So I am putting the, the, the Gemini Vanguard Dreadnought Cruiser below the, the, the Galaxy X. Otherwise, they're basically the exact same ship. It's also why I've said for a while I didn't like the Gemini Vanguard ship. So now you're seeing just how low I'm putting it in my personal tier list as to how I don't like this ship. Granted, when it comes to Sea Store Star ships, you can get the Gemini Vanguard starter pack for 2000 Zen and have a full tier six starship. Starship's not that exceptional, but it's a full status tier six starship. So there is that if, if you're curious. Um, below that would, would, would be the Fleet Negtev. Um, it's actually got reasonable maneuverability for its stats. Um, but again, it's only got four tactical abilities. And it's a battle cruiser with with a cloak. On the other hand, the Galaxy gets a smidget, and I mean it by a smidget higher hull, to get significantly lower turn and no cloak and no, no access to dual cannons. It's a negative, but much worse. So... I am not impressed by this ship, not in the slightest. I think it is a terrible ship. Um, granted, the Legendary Galaxy was an improvement, but not by much. Not by much at all. Um, they made Lieutenant Com Command into Commander Command and Lieutenant Command, and they really didn't change the scene at all besides that. That's why I didn't like the Legendary Galaxy. All right, um, moving on is the Fleet Guardian. Yes, the Fleet Guardian for me is this low on, on the tier list. It's only got Lieutenant Intel. 
not even Lieutenant Commander, but just Lieutenant Intel and only four tactical abilities. Granted, you can still get Beam Over Overload 3 with, with this ship. You can still get Fire Will 3 if, if you want. So it's not the end of the world, but we're definitely on the very, very low side of cruisers now. So, you know, whenever Cryptic said they were going to delay the Mirror Guardian for whatever reason, I was like, eh, whatever. The Fleet Guardian is one of the worst cruisers in, in the game, so I'm not really bothered by it. So, can you make it work? Yeah. Is it, can you make it work in the same way as like pretty much any other cruiser in this list? Yeah. <laughs> like, the concept of this ship was supposed to be like that it's like an evolution of like the Enterprise C and Enterprise D combined, and they launched it with Delta Rising. And then they didn't do anything with it for a long time. And then they released the Enterprise D and the Enterprise C later that was frankly just better ships. So that's just my opinion. Um, the Fleet Guardian has not aged well. Um, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they just released a new, a new Fleet Guardian because this one really sucks. I thought that or they just add like Commander Intel to, to the ship to at least make it a smidge better. Because <laughs> there's a Lieutenant Intel in Modern Star Trek Online is not really much. It's just not. And after that, we get to these, to these abominations. Yes. I think these ships are 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 this bad by the way um because both the science version and the engineering version are commander command but all they have is lieutenant tactical and lieutenant universal to use for tactical abilities that is not very much you can't do very much with these ships at all and for weapon stuff at all. And, and, and that's really dis disappointing. And it's not like you can convert it to like science and do a pseudoscience stuff with this thing. That's actually why the science one's measured higher is because you can at least try with that ship. But these ships suck. Um, if you're, if you're going to buy the mega bundle, please fly the, the tactical versions of these command battle cruisers. Please, 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 please fly the tactical version. Please do that. Please and thank you. The base stats are fine. It's the lack of Lucian Bar tactical and that you're down to four tactical abilities. You have both those things hurting you. And so for me, these ships have to be here. And now we get a different dreaded starship. Now, initially when this ship came out, because I, I didn't do a starship comparisons for the part of my class, I just thought, well, this ship's fine. It's, it's whatever. And, and it was because I initially thought, when I, when I initially saw this ship, I, I thought it was Lieutenant Commander of Science, Lieutenant Commander of Tactical, Lieutenant Engineering, and Ensign Universal Merc Worker. But no, it's, oh, it's double Lieutenant Tactical is what the ship has. And it only has two base tactical consoles. Yeah, it's got a Miracle Worker, but every other Miracle Worker Starship in this video still had at least three base tactical consoles. So you're taking a downgrade on tactical consoles and you're dealing with these dealing with this horrible bridge officer scene. If you want to say, oh, I want to do science stuff with this thing for pseudo um off, off meta science stuff the science miracle worker cruisers can do that better than this ship like and those are way cheaper i mean sure durability and holes fine but that's it now i will make this caveat i think in fact i'm almost i'm like 90 percent sure of this that cryptic released this ship in this state because they rushed this ship out they were they, they mentioned on several 10 4 weeklies over the past few months that they were they were behind on, on starships and there were some starships that were supposed to come out 
but they were behind and, and they couldn't. And so they had to pull other starships that were meant for other things into loot boxes. And I think this was one of those starships, which would, which would make sense for its seating for a double miracle worker. This is a seating that I would expect for a fleet starship. And you know what? If this was released in, in the fleet, I would be okay with this ship. I think it would have been better if it was, you know, at least Lieutenant Commander Tactical um, in, in its seating and in, in, in Lieutenant Science. That would have been way better for the ship. And it would, it would, then if they released it that way and released it in, in the fleet, it would have been a passable fleet Merkur War Worker Cruiser. But they had to rush this thing out and put it in lockboxes where I, even though I think it should have been a, a fleet starship for sure. And they gutted its console layout to make sure that this ship sucked. Like, like there's no, there's no mincing words here. This ship sucks. Um, and sure you, you, you can do C rated limits, but so can basically every other miracle worker starship in, in this video. And As thus, this goes towards the very, very bottom of this tier list. But we aren't at, at the bottom of, of E tier yet. Oh, so what happens to be below this? We're now going to get to the honorable mention before we get to F tier. And this is the starship that most people think of when they think of the worst cruiser in the game. Yes, I think the problem is like third worst cruiser in, in the game. Um, but yes, as, as for worst cruiser, like the, our, our second worst is the Fleet Excelsior. Now, that being said, if you're going to be tanking, you can still make this thing work. For basically every build outside of tanking, this ship is terrible. Now, even with, with a ship like this, you can still get several hundred K DPS with this thing. Okay. With, with the right traits, with, with the right team behind you, you can still do a ton with this ship. But now we're into the territory where we only have three tactical abilities on, on this ship. As a note, the Parliament still had four tactical abilities available to, cause you had a Lieutenant miracle worker that you can make it into tactical. This one only has three granted. It's a Lucid Tank Rare Tactical, so that's still nice. But if you're going to do AG Torpedo Boat with this thing, you've got so many dead engineering abilities. That really, really sucks. Um, and I'm sure Aug has probably done a, probably done his, his, his own theoretical test with the Excelsior to, you know, I'm sure he's probably done 500, 100, 100, 100 K or so with the Excelsior because he's, he, he, he's a man, man. He, he can do basically whatever on any ship and do well but for, for anybody besides augie um it's going to be hard to do much with this ship what does save the ship a little bit from the f tier one it's got four tactical abilities and it does at least have a lieutenant mara tactical i don't recommend this ship for for people to fly as much as i don't like that you know that the like legendary excelsior you know it went away from command at least it was still a flyable starship this one you fly this one if like from the fleet if you don't have the legendary excelsior but you just like to fly the excelsior that's why you fly this ship otherwise just about any other cruiser in the game is better except for one ship because cryptic decided that They'd be like, what if we made the fleet Excelsior? Well, let's figure out a way to make it a worse starship. And so that's what we have here. Our F tier cruiser and a starship that I claim is the worst starship in the entire game is the Kabali Samsar cruiser. So what happened to the fleet Excelsior? Well, instead of Lieutenant Barra Tactical, let's make it a Lieutenant Tactical seat, move the Science seat up, and then make the Ensign Universal, or Ensign Engineering to Ensign Universal. So instead of having Lieutenant Barra Tactical, 
That's, that is now split into a lieutenant tactical seat and an ensign tactical in, in practice. And you're down one, one more console over, over the fleet Excelsior. Yes, technically, you don't have eight force engineering abilities. I don't think having Lieutenant Commander Science, having, having that Lieutenant Commander Science ability makes up for losing your Lieutenant Commander Tactical ability and that downgrading to an Ensign Tactical. For me, that is too much of, of a downgrade when you have so few Tactical abilities to begin with on your ship. Now, that being said, I do have some nostalgia for, for, for this ship. Um, you know, when Delta Rising came out, um, for a long time I was still flying my free tier 5 um, Sovereign. And I was constantly getting blown up by, by the Bob War um, because of how things were back then. Cryptic has eventually nerfed them a little bit. Um, and then it got worse again when we got to, the, to boost the 65. But, um, and so the, the Kabali Samsar was one of those first tier sixes that, that I had. And even though the ship sucked, um, it had like double the HP so I can actually survive a volley of Vob War stuff in, in that mission. Because, because before, in order to beat the missions, what I legitimately had to do, because at that time I sucked at Star Trek Online, I, I legitimately had to lay down mines and, and and I had to lay down plasma trails. I constantly do and you constantly do um, evasive maneuvers. Uh and more part engines and that stuff to get the Volbar to just follow me through 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 the mines that I was laying down. Um and through battle of, of attrition um beat beat them that way. Because a lot of NPC ships don't really do a lot of a lot of active healing during combat, so I was able to do that and just stay in combat while making sure that I didn't get hit by their mines and they would fly through my plasma stuff and mines, and I would slowly beat 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 them down into a pulp um, in in that sovereign. At least in this ship, I could at least take a little bit of a pounding before blowing up. But when it comes to tier six starships in general, this is pretty much the worst. That being said. Can you still do elite content in this ship? Yeah, you most definitely can. Um, actually, like I think it's like my second or third time when I um, completed the Battle of, of Corphus, I actually did it with, with a pre-made in the Kabali Samsar. Um, I had some good traits and I, and I, made, and I, and I made it work. Um, it was hard. Those because a lot of us were using ships that were suboptimal, um, like a lot of other lower ships in this video, um, but we but we, we made it work. Like, and that's really what it comes down to for a TLDR for this video. Just because I've said that some ships in this video suck and are horrible, that doesn't mean you can't do Star Trek Online at this point in time in any of them. You, you, you can definitely do any of the elite content in this game in any starship. Anything. It's just that the part of why I want to make this tier list is just because there's just some ships that it's just much easier to do that stuff in than others. Especially whenever you consider that a lot of the, of, our, of, of the worst stuff costs a lot of money still. So like a lot of this is just like, hey, Especially for a lot of this horrible stuff, like don't pay for a lot of the stuff down here, you know, unless you're really going to get it for the looks. And that's also part of it too. You know, if you're just gonna play Star Trek Online, you don't care about the matter, you don't care about anything, you just want it for the looks, and you're willing to spend a little bit, just spend that little bit for the one ship that maybe you really, really like. And and that's and that's just it. Go ahead and just do that and that's it. Um, now, are there other ways I could have done these lists? I've, I'm for sure. I definitely could have. Um, to me, for this video, this, this made the most sense um, for how this thing was worked. Um, as you can see here in this tier list stuff, D's, 
D tier actually started here, while in the other tier list videos, D clearly started over here, while the Escort 1 had the same amount of ships. There were a lot more ships today in D and E tier than there have been in previous videos. Um, and again, if I did my complete thing for um, for Warbirds, there would have been more ships over, over there. Not many, uh, but, there would, but there would have been more. As you can see here, there are a couple more Warbirds that are, are, are in here that would have ended up in, in D tier if I was being that stringent on making engineering Warbirds in, in D tier or, or lower. So anyway, um, what's cutting stuff out of there and the other stuff? Um, hopefully that was fun for you all. Um, I did again cut some more things out, out of this video. Also, in case you all can notice, I changed this last slide to hint about the Kabali Samsar Cruiser since the beginning of doing these things to see if any of you all would catch on as to why I picked this. I was trying to hide it a little bit, but a couple of you, a couple of you caught on. That's why I actually hid your comments for a little bit and let you all know that, hey, good job. But anyway, um, thank you all for watching. This is, a, this is a long video, so, and there's a lot more ramblings than I normally have for these videos. Um, and I do apologize for that. This week and the past couple weeks have been a bit stressful on, on me for stuff outside of Star Trek Online and Star Trek Community. There's been other pressing things that I've been, been worried about. So I've had to take care of that stuff. And so since this channel is just a hobby for me, it's not my job. I just do this for fun. I get a tiny bit of ad revenue for some of these videos. I'm more of do that just because I know, I know that YouTube now forces ads on my videos. It's been around long enough and could, and YouTube basically forces it. So I'm like, fine. If YouTube is going to put ads on these videos, fine. Let's force like one or two ads in my videos. that are like hours long because they're going to put it anyway. I'll, I'll put one in so that I preemptively stop them from bombarding these these um, videos with ads. I, I, I like remember when when YouTube initially did it, I had to spend like five or six hours just going through every, every video or moving ads because YouTube, tr like because, there, because there, there's a lot of slide transitions in here, they try to put an ad like after every single slide transition. And I was like, no, it's not acceptable to have 15 ads in, in, in a 20 minute video, YouTube. I'm sorry, but that's, that's unacceptable to me. Um, so I spent a lot of time cleaning out ads that, that YouTube added to, to videos. And so hopefully I put like, ho ho hopefully like the two ads I, I'm probably gonna put in this video, like is, is enough to stop YouTube from bombarding this video with ads, but this has been a long video. Um, not as, it's not long enough that um, YouTube will like stop it from uploading, I, I think, unless the file gets too big like last time, but, um, and I've cut things out because I want to make sure that the file is small enough, but um, yeah, we will see. Um, again, um, there will probably be an announcement in the next few weeks as to how the channel is going to be changing in, in, in the near future. Um, but for some TLDR, for those of you that are curious right now, they're actually willing to listen all the way to the super end of my videos after a four hour video. Um, I'm going to be veering away from Starship comparisons. Um, it's not going to be as frequent as I have been doing it. And it's not been as frequent. So there's, there are things that are going to be changing drastically for the channel. So anyway, um, hopefully um, this video was fun for you all. Um, it's kind of part of me sort of saying goodbye um, to doing a lot of this stat stuff. Just wanted to put a lot of my opinions out there so that when I move away from doing this, people will already know like, hey, when you used to do, do this stuff, you know, um, what were your opinions back then? I, I could say, well, back then I, I made a couple of videos, gave me what my opinions were at that time. And so for historical purposes, that's what, what they were back then. So it's part of why I, I was doing, doing this series. Um, 
even though it's not necessarily the most educational, the most best for everyone. Um, but I basically wanted to have these thoughts stored so that as I start to move away from this stuff and do other types of content for Star Trek Online, um, that at least there's that, that historical spot that all of us can, can look, look, look back to. Um, so anyway, um, again, thank you all for watching. Thanks for being patient with this, this video coming out. Um, thank you for being patient with um, the couple of, of, of mistakes. There's probably a few stats uh, mistakes in there. There's a couple of starships that I didn't change the titles for. So again, I apologize for that. Um, but with over 100 starships and the fact that I just make a PowerPoint and then I just talk, um, there's errors that are bound to come up. So that's sort of to be expected. Anyway, thanks for listening or watching or whatever. And um, enjoy the rest of, of, of your weekend.